Welcome to the San Diego County Credit Union Holiday Bowl on FS1. And boy, do we have a great matchup for you. As the 22nd ranked USC Trojans out of the Pac-12 will face the 16th ranked Iowa Hawkeyes out of the Big Ten. Hi everybody, I'm Gus Johnson, along with my partner Joel Klatt, and welcome to San Diego, California. Iowa, only three losses this year to tough teams. Michigan, Wisconsin, Penn State, by a combined 14 points. They're a tough physical team. Yep. They're going to run the football. Yes. They're going to get after the quarterback, and one of the guys that's going to do that is A.J. Epinesa. Ooh, I can't wait to watch him play. You know, I think A.J. Epinesa is one of the premier pass rushers we have in college football, and we get a chance to see him more tonight. Now, he did get a bit of a slow start this year, but in the last month of the season, he was an absolute monster. Five and a half sacks, disrupting the passing game and getting after it in the run game. He's got to have a big game tonight. The reason is, is that high-powered pass-first offense of the USC Trojans, he needs to be in the face of Keaton Slovis all night long. Epinesa, nine sacks on the season. Meanwhile, for USC, last year they finished five and seven. People thought they were going to fire Clay Helton. They start this season a number of injuries, including their quarterback, but a young man came in. Yes. And this young man is a quarterback, and this young man led the way for USC. They're looking for their ninth win tonight. He's so good. Yes, I mean, he, he really is. I think he's actually underrated, even for all the accolades that Keaton Slovis has gotten. He is such a good player. Player for a young player he distributes the ball well he's accurate he's calm in the pocket he runs with this Graham Harrell air raid offense to perfection and one of the reasons why it's so potent is all the weapons on the outside led by the Litnikoff finalist Michael Pittman jr. I know that Iowa has a great defense and this is a defense that prides itself on giving up few big plays but make no mistake about it this is the most explosive offense that they have seen all year long. All right, so coming up here at the Holiday Bowl in San Diego, Kirk Ferentz and his Iowa Hawkeyes ready to take on Coach Helton and his USC Trojans. The opening kickoff coming up right after this on FS1. Welcome back to San Diego. We're ready for the Holiday Bowl, USC and Iowa. Time now to join the third member of our team on the sideline. As always, the All-American girl, Jenny Tad. Well, Gus, the Iowa helmet is going to look a bit different tonight, and that is to honor the late Hayden Fry and Bump Elliott, two men who recently passed away and both so responsible for the success and culture of Iowa football. Now, Bump Elliott was the Iowa athletic director for 21 years. He famously hired Hayden Fry, among other assistants, who've gone on to have very successful coaching careers. And Elliott famously told Fry, you better win or we are both out of here. The decision to hire him, well, it certainly paid off. Fry revived the football program, leading the team to three Big Ten championships, three Rose Bowls during his 20-year career. And back to the helmet, Gus. Now, the decision to remove the Tiger Hawk logo, it does have some history. It has been removed twice before. That is following two tragedies in the 90s. And when we spoke with Coach Ferentz about the decision, he said the Fry family was really on board, and they have been overwhelmed by the outpouring of support from the community. And Coach Ferentz also told us the team will wear special patches next year to commemorate Fry. Now, something Ferentz also pointed out to us just about the significance Coach Fry had on him, and he told us he will always be the man who took a chance on me. At the start of my coaching career, I was proud to coach with him, honored to succeed him when he retired. He was a great mentor, a great friend, and I am forever grateful. All right, Jenny, thank you very much. As Coach Fry passed away this month at the age of 90 after a long battle with cancer, Bump Elliott was 94. Iowa won the toss, elected to receive the football. This series dates back to 1925. USC leads at 7-2 and has won six straight. And we're underway from San Diego, California. And here come the Hawkeyes, Smith Marset. And he is upended as he crosses the 20, gets close to the 25. 
drive. That brings on Nate Stanley, the senior. And boy, has he won a lot of games for this Iowa team. What a good career Nate Stanley has had, and it is coming to fruition right here in this bowl game. Nate's been a starter for three years. This is a year in which he's thrown 14 touchdowns, seven interceptions. He's a talented player. He's big. He's 6'4", 240 pounds, has a strong arm. And one of the things that they really want to attack in this USC defense is on early downs, they want to try to get the ball out to their playmakers. They feel like with Brandon Smith back in the lineup number 12, they're going to have a chance to throw the ball on USC. First down and 10 at the 25-yard line. Tyler Goodson, the single setback for Iowa. And they'll run it on first down, and he is gobbled up immediately. Terrific defense. Now, Ote, Ote with the tackle. Partner, we're off to a good start. I said that one right now. Ote, Ote. <laughs> I Listen, screwed that one up you against know Oregon earlier this year. My apologies. From now on, number one made a hell of a play. <laughs> <laughs> and he will make plen plenty of them. One for one, partner. That's Back right. to 1,000. you got to love it. Palaie Naote Ote. Second down and 11 at the 24. Goodson remains in the backfield for the Hawks. Stanley, short drop with time. Pulls it down. Elects to run it, and it crossed the line of scrimmage. Not a lot of room. Good coverage in the secondary for the USC Trojan. Fele with the tackle. Really good coverage in the back end. And this is a defense that was banged up. And in particular in the back end, they do have, I think, their best player, in particular in that secondary, Talanoa Hafunga, back in the lineup, number 15. And that drop eight style coverage right there, dropping seven guys into coverage, it gave Nate Stanley fits. And here on a third down, this is when Clancy Pendergast, the defensive coordinator, he said he wants to pressure Nate Stanley right up the middle. And here they come. Sergeant Goodson in the backfield. Stanley out of the shotgun on third down and nine. Stanley delivers, and it's a catch and a first down. Brandon Smith, the junior from Mississippi, all hands, gains 10. Great timing from Stanley. Watch as he drops back, and now he's going to look over to his left side. And right here, he's got the window, and he throws it on time before his wide receiver's out of his break, and it's a first down for Iowa. And that's what they missed with Brandon Smith, number 12, back from injury. Now he's healthy and another threat on the outside. That gives Iowa a first down at the 36 on their opening series of the game. Ross Goodson. In the eye formation. Second man through. Goodson hopping through the hole. And he'll pick up a few before being ridden down. Bola Mao comes in there, number 21, from that safety spot. And he was playing real close to the line of scrimmage, number 21. And he's able to squeeze all the way down there and make that tackle. Iowa's got to try to stay on schedule. You know, they're not going to make many of these drives all that lengthy if they're constantly in second and long third and long i know that they just converted on the last third down but they've got to stay on schedule here they're going to go empty here nobody in the backfield when they stand second down and seven at the 39. stanley delivers near side nice throw and catch again goodson and he picks up a first down for the Hawkeyes. Part of the theory when talking with Brian Ferentz, the offensive coordinator for Iowa, Gus, was that he felt like USC was going to be so prepared and, and have to prepare so hard for their two back sets, two tight end sets, that big run formation that Iowa is known for, that he thought that there would be opportunities for easy throws on uh, base down situations, in particular early in this game, and we've seen a couple so far already from Nate Stanley. First down at the 46, Sargent in the game and running back, and they run it around the corner. Smith Marset, he's a burner, and Smith Marset forcing his way down the field, and he'll gain nine yards. John Houston, Jr., the senior from Carson, with the tackle. Plays like that, so important. 
not only for the yardage gain, but also what they do to influence the edge player on the line of scrimmage for the defense. So those defensive ends are the ones I'm talking about. Now, all of a sudden, those types of little jet motion, sweep motion, that's going to influence that player on the end of the line of scrimmage. That last one was Connor Murphy, number 90. And then maybe you can open up some of the seams inside when you get that defensive end to stop. Second down and one of the 45. Regaining the motion man, and they run it straight ahead for the first down. Makai Sargent to Fele with the tackle in the middle, number 78 for USC. I'll tell you, they got some good offensive linemen on this team, don't they? Yes, they do. Tristan Wirfs, number 74. Could is, be a first-round pick. Oh, I mean, he is an absolute animal up front. He is 6'5", 325 pounds. And he is nimble, he's powerful, he plays with great leverage, and he is a young player. He's going to have a de decision after this game whether they come out or not. First down and 10 of the 44. Play action. Stanley sets up and strip. Loose. Iowa gets on it, but that ball stripped. Ufunga got in the backfield and jarred it out of Stanley's hands, a loss of nine. Talanoa Hufunga, he's going to come around the right side of the offense, and he beats the tight end. The tight end tried to move inside first. That was Nate Weeding, and Weeding gets beat around the edge. Hufunga does a great job attacking the football, and Iowa is very fortunate they were able to fall on that. It looks like he kind of double clutched there before he wanted to throw it. And yeah, there was some contact in the back end and nowhere to go there as USC providing some tight windows in the secondary. So after the loss of nine, it's second and 19 at the 43. Stanley still in the shotgun. Stanley delivers way down the field and it's caught. Beautiful catch, Reganey. And it's a gain of 34 and a first down, Hawkeyes. What a route from Reganey. He gives a little outside moves. He's going to come straight up the field, and he's going to go out, and then he's going to head back inside, right up that seam, and does a great job of creating space in the back end. That was Greg Johnson, the nickelback that he was working against, and that's an easy completion for Nate Stanley. That'll make it first down and 10 of the 23 for Nate Stanley and the Hawkeyes on their opening series of the game. Stanley handing it off to Sargent. No, they reverse it. And here they come, Tyrell Tracy Jr. Touchdown, Hawkeyes. 23 yards. USC was totally committed to that run play. Watch on this side. You're going to get right here. You're going to get the defensive end. That's Rector. You got Hafunga. You got the safety. You got all of them committed. And then it's wide open. Wirfs is out there. He takes out the corner, Elijah Griffin. And it's an easy touchdown for Iowa. Keith Duncan in for the extra point. And it's good. Iowa begins the game on a 10-play, 75-yard drive. They score in six minutes and 35 seconds. Tyrone Tracy Jr. paying it off. Hawkeyes up 7-0. Time now for more than a house sponsored by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. San Diego County Credit Union Stadium open in 67, a capacity of 70,561. Former home of the San Diego Chargers and Padres, hosted three Super Bowls and two World Series. Right now, the Holiday Bowl, and there's Michael Pittman Sr. Boy, he is... Fortunately, has a wife that has a lot of talent because his sons can play some sports. I mean, I, wanted, I don't know about him. I, I, who knows about him? He only won a Super Bowl in this building. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what an emo I mean, you got to imagine the emotional night for him, right? Watching Michael, his son, play his last college game in the stadium that he won his Super Bowl in. Very cool. And right now, we're going to get a chance to watch Keaton Slovis lead this USC offense right after this. Keaton Slovis, 
of Scottsdale, Arizona, true freshman. He is the Pac-12 Offensive Freshman Player of the Year. He didn't even think that he was going to get an opportunity to play this uh, season. I, I know it. I mean, won the backup job. JT Daniels goes down in that first game, and Slovis has just taken the ball and run with it. Such a good player, so calm in the pocket, very confident thrower of the ball. The throw on first down, goes through his progressions, now dances out of the pocket. And fires to the far side, caught Amin Ra St. Brown. And I tell you what, Slovis, very fortunate to have this kind of Oof. receiving core. Ain't that the truth? I mean, he's got four guys that not only all went for 100 yards against UCLA, but they are all absolutely great players. And we'll get into that all game long. On second down, now Slovis sprints out of the pocket, looking, sets, delivers, sideline. Almost intercepted. Ooh. Dangerous pass by Slovis. O.J. Mudia, the senior, almost intercepting that football. That would have gone back to the house. Slovis is trying to check this ball down to his back. Malapai. Malapai was trying to turn back inside, and USC narrowly avoids disaster. And they're forced with a third down here early. And they've got to be very careful because this is on defense. They don't see defense like this all season long. And Slovis has got to be patient and get through those reads decisively. Third down and five. Here's Slovis up the sideline. He's got a receiver, and it's caught. I'm going to ask St. Brown. A beautiful touch pass by Keaton Slovis. And a first down for the Trojans, gain of 30. What a beautiful ball right here. And he throws it right up that sideline. He's working the slot fade. It's an inside fade. And the reason that this is such a prominent ball in this offense is that he's got room on the outside in order to complete that over his outside shoulder because he's lined up on the inside. And he throws a beautiful ball there for a first down. First down at the 40-yard line. This time they run it. Malapaya with room jitterbugging and he'll lean forward get six and a half maybe seven on the play Geno Stone the safety with the tackle and talking with Keaton yesterday Gus he was raving about the fact that his running backs are back because he knows that they're gonna have to be balanced against this defense this defense is so execution based they know exactly where they're gonna be lined up they maintain their levels of defense and it's tough to beat second down and two Slovis Going for it all in the end zone for Pittman, incomplete, and a flag on the play. Michael Pittman Jr. guarded by O.J. Mudia. I feel like Pittman's towel Holy was on defense. the ground. Number 11, 10-yard penalty, first down. And that's kind of when the flag came out. Here's Pittman, and he's working against Michael O.J. Mudia was the best corner for Iowa and right there that arm comes across Pittman fights through it that is a great example if you're a young wide receiver out there if Pittman would have stopped Gus and you see that sometimes right you see the wide receiver stop look for the flag and the flag never comes but if you run through the holding penalty then it's more obvious and that's when you get the longer well, first down Slovis guns it and close to another first down as Drake London a freshman from Moon Park, California, makes the catch. They're really high on him as well. He's been great in the second half of the season. He went for 142 against UCLA with a touchdown. They've got Tyler Vons. They've got Amon Ross St. Brown already with a catch. And the Bolitnikoff finalist, Michael Pittman, who led the Pac-12 with his 1,200 receiving yards. Second down and short. Malapai breaks it back, looking for the first, and he has it. So here's what's interesting for USC going forward. Finally, we get a chance to see Mike Leach's offense with five-star players with Graham Harris. Yeah, and USC has put the flag down. They stick with Clay Helton, and then they retain, not only retain, but extend Graham Harrell, the offensive coordinator. And now this offense, like you said, we get to see him race out there with horses. First down and goal, and they throw it to Malapai, and he is... Dropped immediately. Terrific open field tackle by Jack Kerner. And that was one of the things that Graham Harrell told us 
was a big motivation for him to stay at SC. He was courted by others, namely the University of Texas for their open coordinator job, but he wanted to stay at SC because he wanted to work for Clay Helton, number one, and number two, he knows that this offense could be as potent as he's ever worked with next season. Second down, a goal of 12 underneath. Here's Amon Rassing Brown, and he'll get inside the five-yard line. Graham Harrell coming from North Texas, and he replaced Cliff Kingsbury, who was going to be the offensive coordinator, but then got the head coaching job of the Arizona Cardinals. That's right. After being fired at Texas Tech. And it was interesting because Clay went down the road of researching what offense he wanted to run. He, he settled on Cliff Kingsbury, and then he was like, you know what? I still want that offense. Let's go get Graham Harrell. And it's worked out beautifully for this offense and this young quarterback for SC. Third down and goal to the four-yard line. They love to target Pittman in this scenario here. He's bottom of your screen. St. Brown, the motion man. Slovis looks that way. Uh, and the end zone touchdown, SC. Drake London. Just overload that right side of the defense. They did a great job. St. Brown, number eight. He's going to be flying out into the flat. That gets the width of the defense. It spreads them out. And then Drake London just finds the soft spot. He gets there, gives the numbers to the quarterback, and it's an easy throw for Keaton Slovis. And USC answers the quick touchdown from Iowa, and the Trojans go right down the field. Fifth receiving touchdown of the season for true freshman Drake London. As SC goes on a nine-play, 75 yards drive, scoring at 348. Slovis to London, seven up. SC, Iowa in San Diego. Drake London with the touchdown to level the score for USC. And let's go downstairs to Jenny Taft. Well, guys, it's been a special year for Drake London, the freshman. Now, so many of these guys will get a little break after the season wraps. Not London. In three days, he's joining the basketball team at USC. That has been the plan all along. And when I caught up to him about the opportunity, he said, honestly, I can't pick my favorite, but I like them both equally. I just have to mentally focus on the specific sport of the time. He spent a little time with the team in the locker room not sure he'll be playing Sunday but he's moving on so Gus you might be seeing him oh hope so I definitely hope so talented young man this ball fielded by Smith Marset and he gets through the hole before finally being chopped down as he crosses the 25 up to around the 27 Palomao with the tackle Gus, as, as you can imagine, it, I, it's not just a token invite like, hey, he can play basketball. Drake is a phenomenal player. In, in high school, he averaged 29 and a half points per game and over 11 boards per game. He's 6'5", he's 205 pounds. So that Trojan basketball team is going to get a player when he joins them in a couple of days. First down and 10 for Iowa. Both teams scoring on their opening drives, both quarterbacks very good on their opening drives. Empty backfield for Nate Stanley. Here's Stanley to throw it with time underneath. And he has his receiver, Goodson. And Goodson will pick up eight and a half, maybe nine yards on the play. Greg Johnson wrestles him down. Boy, Stanley looks comfortable tonight, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Picked up where he left off, really, in that last series against Nebraska. That was their last game on that Thanksgiving week. And... It was, it was not a pretty game, but late, when they needed it most in the last series, Stanley was at his best. He threw three beautiful passes, led Iowa right down the field for a game-winning field goal, and he's picked off right where he left off. He's 4 of 4 for 55 yards so far tonight. Second and two at the 36. And they'll give it to Goodson. Looking for the first down, the forward lead, and he has it. Tyler Goodson, Georgia native, freshman. A couple of real good freshmen there going against each other. That was Drake Jackson on the tackle. But Tyler Goodson goes for a program that prides itself on the running game. They've had a true freshman here in the back half of the season emerge as their feature back. They trust him. He's explosive. And he's coming off his first 100-yard game of his career in that game against Nebraska. First down and 10 at the 38. High formation. Ross and Goodson for the Hawkeyes. 
Gets it again, bursting through the hole with Rue. You know, they say styles make fights, partner. So Iowa out of the Big Ten, tough, big, physical. USC out of the Pac-12, multiple dynamic receivers with a star quarterback in the making. Interesting matchup for both these teams. I love it. And then both coaching staff said there would be a real feeling out process early in this game because both defenses have just not seen what the opposing offenses are trying to do. They haven't seen it all year long, and we've seen offensive success so far on both opening series. Second down and five, and it's Goodson. Goodson will get close to the first down. Not enough. John Houston denies him from the line to gain. I think what you're going to see as an adjustment here uh, as we get later in the first quarter is that Clancy Pendergast, the defensive coordinator for USC, you're going to start to see him pressure more on early downs because he knows that if you're playing Iowa in this style of offense, you've got to get them off schedule because in this situation, Gus, on a third and short, they're so good and they're so powerful up, up front, it's hard to stop them. Third down and one. Goodson and no, he looks like it may be close. Okay. USC says it's their football, or they're not yielding that first down to Iowa. A good push by the defensive line. Jay Tufele, number 78, doing a nice job. So tough to see where that ball actually was down. They're going to spot him short here. I expect Iowa to at least... Keep their offense on the field to try to draw them offside or try to run a play. They love the quarterback sneak. Remember, Stanley's 240 pounds. Fourth down and one. From their own 47, there's a quarterback sneak, and it's a first down. They do that multiple times a game because of the size of Stanley and the power that he has in that sneak game and a great push from that offensive line and they do a smart thing that's veteran QB move right there Gus there's not a cadence you don't allow the defense to try to tee off on your cadence if you're going to have a quarterback sneak go on the first sound and you can tell that's what Stanley did he gets in there you say go and you just snap the football and you die for that first down veteran move from Nate Stanley first down at midfield now for Iowa second series of the game Smith Marset, the motion man. Play fake. Stanley rolling under pressure. Dumps it off and out of bounds as Sam Laporta, a freshman who they're very high on, yes. makes the catch. He's turned himself into really the number one receiving threat at tight end. And listen, normally you say that about any program. It's like, yeah, that's well and good. This is Iowa. This is like tight end you, folks. Two first-rounders last year. They feel like Sam Laporta is their next great tight end, in particular with his ability to catch the football down the seam. Dallas Clark, second and seven at the 47. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter, a fast-paced first quarter. Hawkeyes, Trojans, seven up from San Diego. <laughs> and during the break, the Holiday Bowl honored the Iowa tradition of waving to the kids of Stead Family Children's Hospital. Seated in the stands today are family and staff members from Rady Children's Hospital here in San Diego, as well as a family from Children's Hospital Los Angeles. It's the most inspirational tradition in all of college football. I remember we were down Iowa City, what was it, last year, Joel? Yeah, last year, Wisconsin was in town. We had the Hawkeyes in Wisconsin. Wasn't that emotional? Man? Oh, my gosh. Oh. You see those kids fighting, oh. those beautiful faces, and just tears automatically rolled down your eyes, your cheeks, rather, out of your eyes. I agree with you. I think it, it's, it's one of the best newer traditions we have in our sport. It's just phenomenal. Second down and seven at the 47 for Iowa. Goods in the single setback. They'll give it to him. Chopping his feet, looking for a hole, and USC 
right there. Hufanga leading the way for the Trojans. And let's check in with JT. Well, Gus, just to add a bit more on the wave and the tradition, you just said it, it is one of the most special traditions in college football. And I caught up with Mark Neville today from the Holiday Bowl and why they wanted to bring it here. And he told me he'd visited Iowa. He was so blown away by seeing it live. He said, we got to bring it. You mentioned the patients who are here. Gus, I'm sitting with a young girl. It's her first football game. And this crowd, these patients, so happy to be here. And thank you very much, Jenny. Third down and nine at the 49. Sergeant still on his feet, picks up a first down. He's got a blocker in front and goes out of bounds at the 25. Drake Jackson escorts him out of bounds after a 19-yard gain. Well, Hafunga has had such a good early start to this game, but here he misses a tackle. Watch 15 USC. He fills the hole perfectly. He's got a shot right here at Sargent, and Sargent's able to step out of that leg tackle. And he gets up the sideline for more yardage, and now Iowa is in business here at the 30-yard line. First down and 10 at the 30. Sargent, the deep man. Play fake. Here's the reverse. Smith Marset wants to throw it. Incomplete. He had his man. Brandon Smith was open, wide open. And Amir Smith Marset just couldn't put it on him. Oh, it was wide open. And here's Brandon Smith, number 12. He runs a great route. Watch how he kind of stops right there. And then he gets himself some space. And it looked like that was just out of his reach. He crashes into the wall there. Oh, my goodness. Looks like he got a fingertip or two on it. Let's hope that lady that he kind of crashed into there was okay as well. Looks like she kind of got a glancing blow down there as he crashed into the wall after the incompletion. Second down and 10 now for the Hawkeyes. Stanley, quick throw this time in the flats, and he's got his receiver, Sam Laporta. And Laporta spinning. And we had a chance to talk to Coach Ferentz, the offensive coordinator, yesterday. And he said one reason Sam gets an opportunity to get out there is because of his great size being such a young player. 6'4", 245 pounds. They say he could probably stand to gain even 5 or 10 more pounds in order to become a better blocker. Remember, TJ Hawkinson, one of the things that made him such a great player, guys like George Kittle, is that they were great blockers at the point of attack. You can clearly see Laporta is a great receiver. Now he needs to develop as a blocker as well as he gets older and develops in the strength and conditioning program for Iowa. First down at the 16. Stanley guns it underneath incomplete. Boy, oh, he put some hot sauce on that when Reganey could have lost a finger. I remember calling games with Steve Tasker, and he said when Jim Kelly would throw to him, it was like the ball was going through a cheese grater. It was like a cheese grater would hurt your finger oh so bad. Oh, my goodness. I can't even imagine. You think of guys like John Elway, the strong arm back in the day. And Nate Stanley, not quite that strong, but he certainly put some mustard on that one to Reganey. 13th play of the drive. It started at the 28, second and 10 at the 16. Goodson. And Iowa, when we saw you talk to the coaches yesterday at SC, it was very interesting because all you and the coaches were in accordance. Iowa, you know where they're going to be, and they're not going to try to fool you. You know what they're going to do. Yeah, and both offensively and defensively, and Clay Helton knew it. And one of the things Clay Helton was most nervous about in facing Kirk Ferentz's team was the fact that they limit the number of possessions that your offense gets. USC has one of the most explosive offenses in the country. They've been out here for one series because USC's defense has not been able to get off the field on downs like this, third down. Third and six at the 12. Stanley looking underneath and looks like a first down. Nice catch and extension by Brandon Smith. Boy, they are a different, different passing attack with Brandon Smith. It looked awfully close there. He's trying to run a little hitch route right at the chains. He does a nice job creating a little bit of space, but then right here he gets driven back, and as he reaches out, it's really tough to see. But they are going to give it to him. It's going to be first and goal. Hawkeyes, he needed to get the ball all the way back, and they could have ruled some progress there right at the spot of the catch. 
And it looks like that's what they ruled, given Iowa this first down. First down and goal to the six yard line for Iowa. Smith Marset crosses. They give it to him on the reverse. Smith Marset touchdown. Amir Smith Marset with the six yard score. Check out this block. This is beautiful. He's going to come all the way out and then come back. This is Nate Weeding from his tight end spot. He influences out and then he gets the angle. That's the block right there that springs for the touchdown. What a terrific series. Stanley has been good. The run game has been good. They've converted on third downs. That offensive line is starting to open up some holes and credit Brian Ferentz with some creative play calling, getting the ball on the edge with those jet sweeps and reverses. So how about this for Iowa? Their first drive, 10 plays covering 75 yards. They ate up 635. This drive, 15 plays covering 72 yards. They eat up 815. Hawkeyes on top of the Trojans, 14-7. NFL this Iowa team looks like an NFL team the way they're stylistically yeah you're right they've eaten up already 14 minutes and 50 seconds time of possession that's Big Ten style football you know toughness offensive line play and sometimes it's hard for teams that are not in that conference to adjust early in games Bayless Jones on the return so coming up Keaton Slovis and the Trojans on offense down by seven here in San Diego at the Holiday Bowl. Time now for our All-State Mayhem moment. JT Daniels injured his ACL and tore his meniscus in the first half of the first game this season versus Fresno State, forcing USC to turn to true freshman Keaton Slovis. He's more than filled in. Pac-12 Offensive Freshman of the Year, a set of USC freshman record for passing yards. First USC player with 400-plus passing yards in three consecutive games. He threw for over 500 in the last regular season game against UCLA. So here's the question, partner. What happens to JT Daniels now? Well, JT has said that he is not going to transfer, that he will stay and continue his rehab, get healthy, and compete for the job here at SC. Now, it is worth noting that he is scheduled to graduate next year and at that point could transfer if he loses the job to Keaton Slovis without penalty and he would have his degree from SC. He's wanted to be at SC his whole life. JT has an SC tattoo on his leg. I mean, he wants that degree from this university. He's going to get that and then make up his mind. But I, I got to tell you, I think it's going to be really tough to beat this kid out. Keaton Slovis is a really good player. On well, first down, Slovis. And he delivers. I'm going to Ross St. Brown. Now, this offense, this air raid offense, is very interesting. And it took some time for players to buy in, especially the receivers. Why? Yes, which is so interesting, right? You would think, like, no, why would they would love it? But. It's, it's such a simple offense. They don't adjust a lot of routes, and a lot of times the receivers think to themselves like, well, wait, I want to be featured. I want to be a primary. I want a matchup where you're trying to get me the ball, and the answer is always let the offense get the ball to you first. Let the offense work. Your production, Gus, will come, but what they have to do is they have to trust that the ball will find them eventually. Okay, so we're not going to put you in a matchup where you know we're throwing you the football. No, no, no. We're just going to allow the offense to work for itself, and the ball will find you eventually. And as the season went on, and you saw the numbers, and you saw them accumulate for all the wide receivers, all the coaching staff said the same thing, that these receivers bought in 100%. It's one of the reasons why they were throwing the ball so well late in the year. Well, first down, Slovis checks it down. Malapayai. And Malapai takes a big hit before being knocked out of bounds. Now, there was a word that was used yesterday in the meetings, and correct me if I'm wrong. Pittman, he said, was it conversions or converted? Yes. Convert, con conversions on routes. So in normal offenses that are not the air raid, there are a lot of routes that are called, like right, part of a concept that will convert based on coverage, and it'll change to a different route. There's not a lot of those in the air raid. They have the routes that stay on, and the theory is, is we're not going to convert a route. We're going to run the route that we told you to run, and you're going to occupy defense, and the ball will go elsewhere. And this is an incomplete pass to Michael Pittman. 
And this air raid offense run now here at USC by Coach Harold, who came from North Texas, is a Texas Tech All-American. Mike Leach was his mentor. Mike Leach, one of the founders of this great air raid defense. He got it from Hal Mummy, or they created it together. Yeah, all the way back at Valdosta, and now Clay Helton is using it here. They'll go empty. Big third down here. Got to protect the passer. Empty backfield for Slovis. And Slovis looking underneath. Caught Amon Ross St. Brown. First down. A 15 yard gain. Kerner with the tackle. He's so good in the slot, Gus. Watch as Brown. He just finds space. He understands that he's got a drop linebacker, and so he just stops. He gets back inside of him and creates space for his quarterback. Amon Ross St. Brown is such a terrific slot receiver because he understands the defense, the structure, and what he's trying to do against it. Slovis in trouble, and he'll eat it. A lot of pressure, A.J. Epinesa, and that is sack number 10 on the season. Well, we told you before the game that this guy's an absolute monster, and here he is. He's going to be working against Austin Jackson. That's a great matchup, and Jackson gets way too wide. It looked like he thought he was going to get help from Elijah Vera Tucker, the left guard, and that help never came. Austin Jackson sets way wide, and the great pass rusher, Epinesa, goes inside and gets to the quarterback. Epinesa becomes the second player on under Kirk Ferentz to record 10 or more sacks in consecutive seasons, joining Matt Roth from 2002 to 2003. Second and 19 at the 44, Slovis over the middle, and it's caught. London breaks a tackle after the catch. Dane Belton finally brings him down, but he gains 16. That went right through John Jackson's hands. Watch number 80. I think this ball might be to 80. He reaches up to try to catch it. The true freshman goes right through his hands and finds the other true freshman, Drake London. How fortunate is that for USC? Looks like a mistake there that they had two wide receivers that close together. Third down and three at the 40-yard line. Under eight minutes to play in the first half. Malapaya bounces it outside. Nice stiff arm first down. Malapaya cuts it back in. Still on the move, and look at that run. Vavai Malapaya, the junior from Hawaii, with a sensational 12-yard gain. And this is what they missed so desperately in the back half of the year, is that any help at the running back spot. Now Malapaya back in the lineup. He came back against UCLA. And what a terrific stiff arm there on the corner. That was Michael O.J. Mudia, who he stiff arms to the ground and continues to fight for yardage up that left side. Malapaya missed five games after knee surgery but returned against UCLA to rush for 60 yards. They'll dump it down, St. Brown. And he'll tiptoe close to the 20. Amon Ra, St. Brown, 68 catches coming into this game for 879 yards, six touchdowns. Caught a season high, eight balls four times this year. This offense, you think back to those Texas Tech offenses, what do they always have? Great slot players. Wes Welkers, Danny Amendola's, and I think Amon Ross St. Brown is a great slot player. He understands space, like I said, route running, terrific player. Second down and two at the 20. Play fake, Slovis, sideline, caught, Pittman, and he steps out of bounds. Tell you what, I think they got something cooking over at Houston. SC this year. in the coming years with this Oof. team, with these players, with this coach, this, with uh, these coaches. This offense certainly is going to be the best offense returning next year in the Pac-12. They're going to miss only two seniors, Michael Pittman playing in his last game, Drew Richmond, who's actually not even playing tonight. He's injured at right tackle. He's the only other graduating starter. Slovis, 11th play of the drive. Slovis, Malapaya, touchdown. Everybody's open. This is the air raid at USC. Five-star guys. Give them a second, Trojan fans. This is called trust in the offense right here. The ball will find you in particular if you get the matchup. He gets it. Malapai runs a great route, a little skinny kind of swing route from the backfield and the short side. And what a great throw from Keaton Slovis. He threw it to him so accurately that he never had to break stride. 
Good timing, great accuracy, equals yards after the catch. Touchdown, Trojans. Extra point up and good. 11-play drive covering 77 yards. SC scores in 519. Little over six to play. First half, 14 up. We've got a game in San Diego, folks. Here we go. Fansville, we're in beautiful San Diego, California, folks. It was warm today, sunny as usual. These players have had a lot of fun hanging out here in Southern California, going to SeaWorld, the zoo, and just enjoying the weather. Good game so far. 14-14. Offenses look great. Not a lot of D going on. As SC sends it away, Smith Marset inside the five. Hops through the hole. Watch out. He can fly. Smith Marset down the sideline. See you later. Touchdown, Hawkeyes. 98 yards. In the regular season finale against Nebraska, he had a 95-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Well, it's going to be Jaden Williams, number 14, that has really the only shot at Smith-Marset. Watch 14 right here. There's the shot. He misses the tackle. Great little hurdle. And then you see the speed. Amir Smith-Marset burning down the left side, takes it to the house. How about that for electricity? The slow team, right? They've been 10-minute drives, and then boom. Explosion, Amir Smith Marset from Newark, New Jersey. Big time player, he's a junior. And Iowa takes the lead here, 21 to 14. Just one Sunday left in the NFL regular season. Download the Fox Sports Super 6 app and play Super 6 NFL Sunday for free for a chance to win up to $250,000 of Terry Bradshaw's money. One young man that may be making money on Sunday is Amir Smith Marset. He's the first Hawkeye with a rushing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, and a kickoff return touchdown in the same season for Iowa since Jermel Lewis did it in 2002. And he gets another kickoff return for a touchdown in this game, the Holiday Bowl. 5.48 to play, 21 14. SC's turn. It's like a pitcher getting hot back-to-back -back games with a kickoff return for a touchdown. Here was that reverse early for Iowa. They went right down the field, scored. USC answered the pass to the freshman, Drake London. Then it was Amir Smith-Marset on the little jet sweep. He shows his wheels on the outside. USC answers to Malapai. And then here in the second straight game, Amir Smith-Marset goes the distance for a kickoff return. 95 against Nebraska, 98 here. Gus, that guy has got some wheels. I mean, right when he broke that tackle, you could obviously see it from up here. And then the Jets, he turned them on, and he was gone. First down to the 25 for SC. Carr bottled up and dropped for a loss. Well defended by the Hawkeyes. Welch, as well as John Wagner, combining on the tackle. Oh, and this type of game this ebb and flow it puts pressure on the offenses in particular the quarterbacks you feel like you need to be perfect because no one's getting a stop no one's tackling very well the rust clearly showing in the tackling department and these quarterbacks are going to have to score a lot of points second down and 11 Slovis throws it out Carr will be lucky to cross the line of scrimmage a swarming Iowa defense led by Dane Belton, the freshman from Tampa. Well, here you go. You get the energy, and now Epinesa is going to come back on the field. You're probably going to get some sort of pressure or a stunt in the front four to try to get Epinesa free to provide some pressure here on the third and long. He's going to be at the top of your screen. Now he's moving down. Here's 94, walking around. There he is, right there. Watch Michael Pittman, receiver at the top of your screen. He's been their go-to guy all year. Slovis in trouble and he's sacked or hit as he throws loose ball. Iowa says they have it. And they do. Nick Neiman knocked it out of his.
his hands. Recovered by Christian Welch. On the field with a fumble. Recovered by the defense. First down, Iowa. A rule that it's a fumble. Neiman comes on the pressure. Nick Neiman comes on the blitz. Here's Neiman on the kind of the middle, and he's coming straight up the middle. And he gets there. Good design. Bust in protection. Neiman goes right after the ball, and that's going to be awfully close. You could make an argument based on that call that that hand could have been moving forward, but no, I think that's going to be somewhat of an empty hand because it was at that back moment where that hit occurred and it started to come loose. Obviously, we're going to have Dean Blandino weigh in on this, but based on the fact the call on the field is a fumble recovered by Iowa, that's going to be very difficult, Gus, to try to overturn. And let's go to Dean. Dean Blandino joins us from our Los Angeles studios, our rules analyst. Dean, what do you see? Yeah, Joel, I thought Joel did a great job describing it. Is the hand coming forward with control in an intentional motion? It almost looks like the defender hits the arm and the arm comes forward because of that contact. To me, it was ruled a fumble. I don't see obvious evidence of intentional forward movement of that hand to make it a pass. It is close. But I think, again, the ruling on the field, it has to be obvious to change that. There's where the contact occurs. And I think that the fact that that call on the field is a fumble, there's just nothing to overturn it because you can clearly see that he's losing control. This is a great angle right here. It's kind of behind his helmet, but it's clearly coming out of his hand. He's winding up, trying to get the ball down the field, and it's clearly coming out of his hand. I don't and think Joel, can you intent. just give the give the fans an official definition of this rule? Well, I mean, Dean said it perfectly. He's got to have control of the football with an intentional direction, trying to pass that football in a forward motion in order for it to be incomplete. If there's any control lost before that intentional forward movement with control, Dean, I, I believe I'm explaining that correctly, and he's still with us. If there's any loss of control before the intentional forward movement uh, with intent to pass, then it would be deemed a fumble. Dean? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's intentional movement of the hand forward with control. And looking at this, it looks like the side judge is writing. That tells me that they're going to change this, and, and I don't agree with that. That that This is too close to change, and I think based on a couple of the angles, it looks like the ball's out before the hand comes forward. That's where the contact occurs. You can see is right when the ball reaches its furthest point back. This is where the contact occurs, right there. And I totally agree with you. And Dean, this is not the intent of replay. The intent of replay is not to re-officiate the play. They need to go in and just evaluate the call on the field. I don't think there's enough to overturn, but it looks like they're going to. After further review, the quarterback possessed the ball in his hand, and it was going forward. Therefore, it's an incomplete pass. It would be fourth down and 10 from the 25-yard line. Please reset the game clock to 4 minutes, 33 seconds. So USC catches a major break. Yep, and it's a field position break here because it will be fourth down. USC is going to have to punt, so they achieve the goal of stopping the USC offense for the first time tonight. But they're going to have to, they're going to lose here. What is it going to be? About 35, maybe even 40 yards of field position based on that ruling. But I, I'm in lockstep with Dean there. I don't believe that that should have been overturned. There wasn't indisputable video evidence to overturn that in my view. But that's the way it goes. Let's snap the football and play football. So SC will punt Ben Griffiths, 6'5", redshirt freshman, 28 years old. We'll send it away. He's from Melbourne, Australia. Please reset the game on correction. The play clock at 25 seconds. It will start on my signal. End over end kick. Not a good one. And Iowa will get very good field position. With the ball at the 45-yard line. 
Hawkeyes up 21-14. This coach, but he's getting, he must be all bared up right now. <laughs> he's gonna say, coach Meyer. He's probably in, he's in Arizona. Pulling his hair. That's right. <laughs> he's in a dark room. It's like, we have to remind him he's not the head coach. He's not the head coach. And he... <laughs> <laughs> First down to 10 at the 48 for Iowa. Tracy Jr. in motion, play fake. Stanley, here's the screen, Laporta. And the Porter taken down. Nice play by the Hawkeyes. Misdirection there. Yeah. And they've done that a lot, haven't they? Brian Ferentz has put together a really good game plan. And he has he's played off of what he assumes they're going to be preparing for. Watch this play fake from Stanley. Beautiful play fake. He puts it right there, kind of on his belt. Then he turns around a little tight end screen to Laporta. And they've had the misdirection on the jet sweep. The reverse went for a touchdown. He's done a really good job of playing the aggressiveness against USC. This will go against Iowa. It's like a false start. False start, offense, number 39. Five-yard penalty, second down. It's Nate Weeding, tight end. They lost two good ones, didn't they? Noah Fant, TJ Hawkinson, and Brian Ferentz had to rebuild this offense. It was such a tight end-oriented offense, in particular in the passing game. Those two players had 88 receptions, 1,279 yards, 13 touchdowns. Both were first-round draft picks in the NFL, and now it's Laporta's turn to try to be that guy moving forward for the Hawkeyes. Second down and nine at the 49. Stanley taking his time. Now bounces it wide. Stanley delivers, caught, and out of bounds. That's a nice play. Nico Regani gets out of bounds. But Stanley so patient and calm in the pocket. It's a gain of 10 on second and nine. First down, but a flag. Illegal touching offense, number 89, was covered up, went downfield, and caught the pass. Five-yard penalty, second down. Uh, that's just a poor job on the outside formationally because Regani, yeah, Hold on now. They're saying that Regani was not off the line of scrimmage. There's a Regani. I think that that's clearly off the line of scrimmage there, which means that he should be able to go on. They're saying that he was on the line of scrimmage because the outside receiver was on the line of scrimmage. If he was also on the line of scrimmage, then he can't go down the field. But it looked like he was clearly off by at least a yard right there. It didn't look like his helmet was within the waistband of the center. Uh, that's a little overzealous of that official on the far side. Second down and 14 at the 44. They play on. Stanley delivers. Back shoulder caught at the 30. Regaining this time it'll stand. What a throw. What a throw. This is an NFL throw right here. He's going to have a seam right down the right side. Watch as Stanley throws this ball on time. Boom. And he throws it to the back shoulder of the seam fade. That is a beautiful throw. Regani with the late adjustment. Remember, don't turn around too soon. You're going to lose your balance. So he turns around late to that back shoulder, catches it, and it's a first down Iowa. 24-yard gain, first and 10 at the 30. This is the best that Nate Stanley has played all year here so far in this first half of the Holiday Bowl. Play clock winding down, and Nate Stanley calls timeout. 2.39 to play in the first half. Iowa with the lead and the ball. Stanley. 21-14, Iowa on top of SC. Uh, you talked about Nate Stanley. Well, he's 2-0 at bowl games. Only Rick Stanzi has ever won three bowl games as a starting quarterback at Iowa. And Nate playing some of his best football right now. Yeah. He's 9 of 10, 110 yards passing. And it's important for a guy like him. Listen, he's 
he's got an NFL future where he lands in the draft I think remains to be seen if you were just evaluating him off of this game you would say he's a first round draft pick because he's been really good nine of ten 110 yards like you're saying Gus but it's been more than that it's been the timing the ball placement everything has been on point and he's also out there an orchestrator not every quarterback at the college level is doing all the checks doing all the shifts and the motions making sure you're in the right play he's handling all of that out there on the field not having to get that check from his coach on the sideline first down at the 32 for Iowa Goodson trying to get outside and does crosses the line of scrimmage and tiptoes out of bounds close to the first down let's go downstairs to Jenny well, we asked Coach Ferentz to describe Stanley. He said, I need to think carefully about these words. And he said he's smart, he's hardworking, and he is serious. And, guys, he is serious about that bowl record, about getting a third bowl win. You mentioned it, Gus. And I asked him to reflect on his experience. And he said, you know, there's been some good, there's been some bad, but I've always tried to put my team first. And I really take pride in that. But, of course, ending on a good note, it would mean a lot to Stanley after his last couple of years. All right, thank you. Second and one at the 23. Goodson. And he will not get the first down. Wrestled down hard to Fele. Boy, he's a good player. Jay to Fele. It's not often that we get to sit here and sing the praises of a defensive tackle. And even though they move the chains there, Jay to Fele. Brian Ferentz, the offensive coordinator of Iowa, said Jay to Fele was the best defensive tackle they saw on film in preparation all season long. He was first team all Pac 12. He had 39 tackles, four and a half sacks, six and a half tackles for loss from that tackle spot. And just a sophomore from Salt Lake, he's got a bright future in this game. First down to the 22, empty backfield for Nate Stanley. Stanley guns it, and it's caught. Smith again, we've been calling his name a lot in this first half. And Brandon Smith gains nine on the play and again that ball out on time on target Stanley playing with great rhythm and confidence and sometimes that confidence comes when your best players are back on the field that's clearly the case with number 12 Brandon Smith back from injury for Iowa they give him 10 first down of the 12 for Iowa 124 to go here's Smith Marset what a burst through the whole touchdown this guy is explosive. The third touchdown of the game for Smith Marset. And what a first step. And how about Laporta? He's going to come out and get the block. And then number 10, John Houston, gets lost in space. He goes up the field. He should have gone out to the wide receiver. And now you're just going to get the race to the end zone. Marset is going to win that race. The explosiveness that is there. And Iowa is going up and down the field on the Trojans tonight. Amir Smith Marset with a rushing touchdown, a receiving touchdown, and a 98 yard kickoff return touchdown. Putting on a show. 28-14 Hawkeyes. Oh, Coming up at the half, Rob Stone, Brady Quinn, Reggie Bush, and Matt Leinert are standing by with the State Farm halftime show. And they'll have a lot to talk about, especially this young man, Amir Smith-Marset, with his third touchdown of the first half. And USC has no answer for him. And USC is supposed to be the more athletic team, but they are not tackling well. They're not taking great angles. Amir Smith-Marset's speed has totally taken over this game. Handing the ball to him in the return game, and there on a little wide receiver screen on the outside. So SC will get it again with 118 remaining in the first half. And this one in the end zone for touchback. Sunday is a top 25 showdown as West Virginia takes on number two, Ohio State. Then UMass Lowell battles number 11, Michigan. Catch all the action starting at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. College basketball season getting ready to heat up on Fox. What's the line you think on UMass Lowell versus Michigan? <laughs> a lot. Fox Bet says 32. 32. If you had 32 and UMass Lowell, you lost. 
<laughs> according to Warner Wolf. First down and 10 of the 25. That one deflected at the line of scrimmage. Iowa getting hands up yep. in the air. Pass rush is starting to get going here. The energy of this defense, and this is what happens when you're not running the football, and that's one of the knocks against USC is that they're not committed to the run game, that they're a pass-first offense, and they're a pass-too-often offense. Chauncey Golston with the block. Now Slovis airs it out, and nothing. Michael Pittman, the intended receiver, Michael O.J. Mudia in coverage. And now, Gus, think about how long this defense for USC has been on the field in this first half. And you've got a third and long. This is not the, the spot to just punt the football away. And again, you've got to be aware of A.J. Epinesa, number 94. He's the best pass rusher on the field. He's going to be rushing off the left side of that offense. Already with the sack in the first half, Slovis. Dancing, Slovis throws over the middle and caught. That's a great catch in traffic by Tyler Vaughns and a first down SC, a gain of 15. Hadn't heard Vaughns' name yet, and he goes way up the ladder. Great athleticism to get that ball. Now inside of a minute, USC is going to have to hurry. They have three timeouts remaining. Slovis under pressure. Slovis trying to reverse and does. Slovis creating. And incomplete. Pittman just couldn't hang on. That ball knocked out of his hands by Geno Stone. How did Slovis get out of that in the pocket? It looked like he was dead to rights. Iowa brings another pressure. It looks like they're going to get home. That's Dane Belton, number four. It looks like he's got Slovis. Slovis gets out of it. He should have run. He looked to throw the football. He should have run. He could have gotten out of bounds. He could have gotten probably the first down and then some. That's an inexperienced decision to try to force that ball down the field. I thought he should have run that ball. Second down and 10 at the 40-yard line. Slovis with time. Underneath, caught. Big time tackle by Geno Stone, Drake London with the grab. And USC's going to have to use the timeout as that ball was completed in front of the first down marker in the middle of the field. 38 seconds to go. 28-14, Iowa. Thirty-eight seconds remaining in the first half. Twenty-eight fourteen Hawkeyes out of the Big Ten leading the Trojans out of the Pac-12. Such an important thirty-eight seconds here. USC is going to get the ball back to start the second half. So as well as Iowa has played, and they've been nearly perfect, in particular on the offensive side and the special team side, USC has a chance to kind of negate that and minimize the impact of that great half from the Hawkeyes if they can get points here and potentially score on their opening series of the third quarter. Third down, four at the 46. Slovis needs the first down, and... Parents took a timeout from the sideline. Before the snap, timeout was called. Iowa, their second timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. Hawkeyes with one timeout left. SC with two. Back after this. Final 38 seconds of the first half, and we'll see if SC can put points on the board to stay close with this Iowa team. As you mentioned, partner, the Trojans will have the ball to start the second half. And they're going to need to get to, I think, at least the 34, 33-yard line to get within Chase McGrath's range, the kicker. Remember, and earlier this season, McGrath kicked a career-long 52-yarder at BYU. Slovis. And that's going to be a first down as Pittman catches that one in traffic. They got to get going here, get back up to the line of scrimmage and get going. Now they need about 15, 16 more yards to be comfortable, comfortable about a field goal opportunity. Slovis looking, guns it. Another first down. This time Tyler Vaughn. What a great throw there. Vaughn's finds himself some space and a beautiful throw from Slovis who had to manipulate the pocket, get himself a little bit of time and allow that wide receiver to come open. And now they are in business. They're about five yards away from a legit field goal opportunity from McGrath. 
Here he is as he steps up. That step up so nice, and he puts that ball perfectly right out there for Tyler Vons, who's now come up with a nice couple of nice catches here late in this first half. This is why I love Slovis. He's just never deterred, right? I mean, he's just remains calm, learns from his mistakes, feels the pressure, but he never puts his eyes on the rush, keeps his eyes down the field. And I love the way that he works his feet in the pocket to stay balanced, throw the ball on time. And it's one of the reasons why he throws with good authority and he's accurate as well. Well, he had a pretty good coach and mentor back in Arizona. His high school coach was Kurt Warner. I guess when your high school shows up with a gold blazer, <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty darn good. I had a chance to talk with Kurt about Keaton, and he raved about not only the player, but the person that Keaton Slovis is, the way that he learns, goes about his business, and he needs one more completion here to put the Trojans in uh, legitimate field goal range. Slovis. 18 of 24, 159 yards passing in the first half. First down at the 39, but can he pay it off? Slovis drops back. Sideline pass wide open. St. Brown. A gain of 26. Great protection allows a late developing route to come open. Slovis has time, and watch Amon Ross St. Brown has time to set up the Defensive back Dane Belton number four find the space the green grass as they call it in the air raid And that's a huge completion for USC now looking for a touchdown first down and ten at the 14 Slovis And he'll just air this one out of the back of the end zone. He was under Tremendous pressure on the back side well, and that was Epinesa who had beat Austin Jackson and was bearing down on Slovis and was just a beat late. Slovis almost had to, sensing the rush, burn that ball and throw it out of the back of the end zone. What a great matchup out there. That left tackle, Austin Jackson, has an NFL future against potentially a first rounder in A.J. Epinesa. Watch for Pittman here, Gus. That's what they like. He's the receiver in the slot at the bottom. Slovis doesn't look his way. Slovis in the end zone. Incomplete. St. Brown, the intended receiver. Kerner in the vicinity for Iowa. Felt like that was one of the first times that Slovis rushed. He had him. There was a window there, and that ball was just a bit high and outside for St. Brown, who couldn't bring it down, and now USC is going to have to settle for a field goal. Well, Chase McGrath comes in, sophomore from Newport Beach. 13 for 15 this year, 12th nationally in field goal percentage. He started the year 8 for 8. This, a 32-yarder. And it's perfect. So the Trojans get three, 28-17 at the end of the first half of the Holiday Bowl here in San Diego. Amir Smith-Marset, three touchdowns, rushing, receiving, and a kickoff return for 98 yards. Hawkeyes look really good. Right now, we'll send you to Rob Stone in Los Angeles for the State Farm Halftime Show. San Diego in the Holiday Bowl, 28 to 17, Iowa leading USC as we head to the second half. Gus Johnson along with Joel Clapp, partner. What an electric first yes. half. Nate Stanley played solid, but yep. Amir Smith Marcet with three touchdowns, rushing, receiving, and a kickoff return for 98 yards. Who would have thought that you would say USC can't handle the speed of Iowa? And that's the case with Amir Smith Marcet, but it really has been the tone setting of Nate Stanley and his decision making that got Iowa out on the right foot. They have not been stopped, all right? And Nate Stanley has been throwing the ball on time and on target. He's done a great job. And then it was the electricity of Amir Smith Marcet, three total touchdowns. 
One on a return, one on a rush, one on a pass. He also almost threw for a touchdown in that first half, which would have been amazing. Slovis has played really well for USC. 19-27, 184 and two touchdowns. But it's just been so much through the air. They can't get any ground game going. And because of that, they've given the ball back to Iowa with plenty of time. And Iowa has eaten up the clock. USC, four possessions, two touchdowns, a punt and a field goal. Iowa has scored a touchdown on all four of their possessions in this game. And that's what Clay Helton was worried about is the fact that this style, Gus, as you talked about styles make fights, this style of limiting the number of possessions, Iowa is doing that. Only four possessions for each team in that first half. Kirk Ferentz has to be pleased with the way his team played in that first half, a complete first half, offense, defense, and special teams. You know USC is explosive, so they're going to score points, so to slow them down, well done. Clay Helton, what adjustments does his team make as we start this second half? I think they got to get the run game going a little bit. It's clear that they can throw the football. We all know that, but... The fact of the matter is, is that pass rush for Iowa was starting to get home and affect Slovis in the second quarter. The USC play selection, 28 pass plays, only five rushes in that first half. They've got to do a better job establishing the run and slowing down that pass rush from the Hawkeyes. Sudak will send it away. Jones and Carr, the deep men, for SC, and it's a touchback. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Taft. 28 points for Iowa in that first half. That's their most ever in a bowl game. And of course, Coach Ferentz really pleased with what he's seeing offensively. Nate Stanley, you guys mentioned him. He told me he really had so much success against Nebraska. He carried that over. Now, Amir Smith-Marset, you also talked about his dominance, guys. Coach Ferentz said he had actually been a bit banged up. So I'm just so pleased to have him out here and dominating today. He said for his defense, they need to get some big stops, make every play count. The message from Clay Helton was about team football. we got to get our defense off the field. Our offense hasn't had any time to get things going. We're starting with the ball. Expect a big drive here. All right. Well, the Hawkeyes have held their last 13 opponents under 24 points. The second longest active streak to Clemson. who will be playing in the college football playoffs. 16 for the Clemson Tigers. And on first down, Carr running it, and he'll gain five. I guarantee you that was part of the conversation for USC. They looked at the first half stats, and they saw exactly what I told you. 28 passing attempts, five rushes. They come out right away, give the ball to Carr. Second down and five, Slovis over the middle. And it's a catch. Pittman in traffic and goes down. Michael Pittman with a 10-yard reception. Christian Welch, the middle linebacker, with the tackle. And I'm not even suggesting that they have to dominate on the on the ground. Gus is all, all I'm saying is that they've got to be committed to it to some degree to slow down the rush so that Slovis can get back in rhythm throwing the football like you saw right there on second down. It's his last step in the drop. Boom, that ball is out. It's on target, and Pittman moves the chains. First down at the 40-yard line. Play fake, Slovis. Deep ball. He's got a receiver. Oh, what a catch and what a throw. He dropped it in the basket. Goes down hard. I'm on Rossi Brown. Gain of 55 yards. Slovis gets absolutely drilled on this play right in his chest. Bam! But he delivers a beautiful ball. Personal ball. foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 95. Half the distance to the goal, at it from the end of the play, first down. Cedric Lattimore called for the penalty. And that was that last move, taking him down to the ground hard after the ball was released. And Amon Ross St. Brown with a beautiful catch. And I got to say, I, I'm a little worried right now for Slovis. When that head hits the turf, that's... That's worse than going helmet to helmet. Remember, he's already had a concussion this year. He had it against Utah. Remember, on about what was the second, third play of the game, Fink had to come in, their third stringer to begin the year. Back up now, Matt Fink, and led him to a win against Utah. Let's hope Slovis is okay here. First and goal of the two. I'm in Ross St. Brown. Eight catches, 152 already. Slovis with the handoff. Car touchdown, Trojans. And just like that, USC gets into the end zone. 
on their opening series of the second half. Four plays, 75 yards. They score at 131. Good push here from the offensive line. On that left side, you're going to get guard. You're going to get center. They get a nice little push, provide a hole. That's Vera Tucker, 75. Brett Nealon, number 62. And Carr is able to plunge into the end zone. Exactly what we talked about at that first half. Slovis comes up with a big play, but they're able to score with a field goal. Now get a touchdown, and they kind of negate that great first half for Iowa and close this to a four-point game. 13-29 to go. Second half just getting started from San Diego, folks. Iowa SC, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Twenty-eight, twenty-four. Keaton Slovis has been taken into the tent. Now you see him coming out. He's got his helmet in his hands. That's a good sign. That's a good sign because this was earlier in the year against Utah. His head hit the turf in extreme fashion. He missed the rest of that game with a concussion. Also missed the following game. Here's what just happened. He goes down. That head whips back to the ground. Folks, as a quarterback, that's much worse than taking a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. It's like two cars getting in a car accident. There's give, right? But when a car hits a tree or an embankment where it's concrete and there's no give in that other element, that's much worse. That's like your head hitting the ground for a quarterback in particular going backwards. Talking to Keaton yesterday. When he was a young man, his mother didn't want him to play football. She let him play flag and eventually let him play tackle. And she would say if he ever got a concussion, it was over. He got a concussion this year. She came to him and said, remember what I said? She said, Mom, I'm old enough now. Here's an onside kick. Did it go 10 yards? Yes, it did. SC football. Clay Helton shook the dice, and they were hot. That is great execution. He's got the momentum on his side. He realizes that Iowa is trying for that big return. They're sinking back. And this is excellent. Unbelievable. He's able to kick it right to himself. That's Michael Brown, number 49, comes in as the kickoff man and he just squibs it right over that 10-yard barrier did a great job not touching that football and nobody else touched an Iowa player remember if someone else tried to block before that ball went 10 yards that would have been negated but everything goes 10 yards he gets on that ball and USC is back in business how about that call from Clay Helton 28-24 Slovis back on the field first down and 10 at the 46 Malapaya in the backfield. Slovis to throw on first down to the sideline. And it's caught. Tyler Vons first down. And to get back to the story about Keaton and his mom. His mom said, hey, if you ever get a concussion, football's over. He got a concussion this year. His mother went to him and said, remember what we said? Keaton said, mom, I'm grown. That doesn't count anymore. And he also said... I'm getting a free education. That's right. <laughs> you want to pay for it, Mom? <laughs> Do you want to pay for my school? <laughs> First down at 10. Is Mom said, Good luck. Good luck, son. <laughs> Here's Slovis. Hit. Loose. And SC has it. Wow. AJ Epinesa stripped it. And Slovis is hurt again. And now it's that right arm because he was trying to come across. He's reaching down on that right arm, right hand. They're fortunate there that they were able to even get that ball. It looked like it was going to fall right into Chauncey Golston, 57's arms. Here's that Vanessa. Watch as he's throwing it, and right there he kind of gets a hold of it. That is a dangerous move right there because that can rip all those muscles and tendons as you're trying to strain and put that torque on your arm. See how as it goes backwards right there? Terrible for your shoulder as a quarterback. And Epinesa strips the ball out, and USC is fortunate enough to get the recovery as that's Austin Jackson, who is Johnny on the spot. But Slovis is down. That is not a good move. That backwards arm, because he's trying to throw it forward, so he's got that strain under tension. So that brings on Matt Fink. Matt Fink, who beat Utah earlier in the season, came in when Slovis had that concussion we just showed you. Had a huge night for the season. He's thrown for just over 500 yards, four touchdowns, and four interceptions. 
And look at Clay Helton getting this guy going. Encouraging Matt Fink. And how about the crowd coming alive for Matt Fink, knowing what he did earlier in the year. The sideline coming alive with some energy as their star quarterback is going to be taken back to the tent, and that arm is going to be looked at. And that last play is an incomplete pass. The previous play is under further review. And Vanessa, he already has a sack in the first half. Austin Jackson just can't keep up with him on that play as Slovis goes down. Slovis trying to walk it off. This is under review in terms of the actual ruling. Dean Blandino is with us. Dean, they're trying to review this, whether it's going to be incomplete. It's going to stay USC ball. Austin and Jackson did recover it if they deem it a fumble, but they're reviewing whether it's incomplete, correct? Yeah, and, and I'm trying to figure out what the ruling on the field was. I think they ruled it incomplete, but you can see there, ball is hit before the hand comes forward. This is a fumble. SC did recover, and then instead of the clock being on the snap, they'll wind the clock coming out of this because it was a fumble. And and Dean, if I'm not mistaken here, they're, based on the recovery, this is going to be a couple of yards different if it is yeah, a fumble. The, I think there's there's a, a yard or two difference from the line of scrimmage. It'll go wherever the ball was recovered. Only on fourth down would it come back to the spot of the fumble. So this is difference here of a couple of yards. And then as Dean pointed out, the difference in clock as Slovis continues to be looked at here on the bench. He's trying to shake it off. I just hope that's more of, of a hand than it is the shoulder. Yeah, it's not a good sign as they're trying to rotate it right there. That rotator cuff was fully extended, Gus. And then he's trying to whip it forward when Epinesa rips it back. That is an awkward and precarious position to be in as a thrower. And folks, if you are watching A.J. Epinesa for the first time, Chase Young is the best pass rusher in all of college football. Could be the number one overall pick. But A.J. Epinesa is one of the best pass rushers in college football. And he's going to have a decision to make after this year. There's some analysts believe that and teams believe that he could be and sneak into the back end of the first round if he were to leave early. He is a junior, has a year of eligibility, has 10 sacks in back-to-back -back years. Quiet, and unassuming young man. Some inside the program at Iowa believe and wouldn't be shocked if he comes back based on his upbringing, his family situation, the fact that he loves it at Iowa, can get his degree, uh, but he does have a decision to make, and he is a terrific player. A lengthy review here. They need to get this going. Again, this is only going to be a difference of about two yards and then they will wind the clock on the ready for play the game clock rather than waiting for the snap of the football to start the game clock because this will likely be ruled a fumble and recovery by USC after further review the ruling on the field is a fumble there was an immediate recovery by number 73 of offense at the spot where the ball is right now the game clock will start on my seat. So, Matt Fink from Rancho Cucamonga, California, comes into this game 46 of 70, 574 yards passing, four touchdowns, four interceptions, one rushing touchdown. Slovis is in pain. He threw for 351, Gus, against Utah, one of the best defenses in the country. And now he's going to be called on again to lead these Trojans back from a four-point deficit here in the second half. 2015 Prep All-American at Glendora High School. Dual threat. You know, what they did so well against Utah is they threw it up 50-50 ball situations. They let their wide receivers win down the field in one-on-one -on -one opportunities against Utah. We'll see if they go back to that well here. Second down and 10 at the 43. Here comes a blitz. Yeah. 
Fink with the pitch. Malapaya trying to pick his way forward. And he won't go far. Gang tackling by the Hawkeyes. And that pass rush, I told you it got heated up in the second quarter. Slovis continued to be under the rest, even though they got down the field for a touchdown. And Epinesa and company be charged with getting after Matt Fink now here in the second half. Third down and nine, a passing situation. The first for Matt Fink coming in for Keaton Slovis at the 42. Play fake. Fink stumbles in trouble and sack. They brought the pressure, and Nick Neiman gets to him. A mistake here. You're going to have tackle and guard block one player. And what that allows for is Neiman is going to come and he's just totally free right in the middle of the field. They also brought Breton, excuse me, Dean Belton, the nickelback on the outside. That protection has got to get secured. Too many times you see USC, two linemen blocking one player and one is free in the quarterback space. Trojans punted away. Max Cooper, the deep man. Oh! And jumps on it quickly. Dangerous play for the Hawkeyes. 28-24, Iowa with the ball and the lead when we return. Keaton Slovis is back in the medical tent for USC going out here in the third quarter. A.J. Epinesa trying to strip the ball away on the pass rush. All of those drills you see him doing there, kind of thumb down, pressure on the hand, seeing if he can lift his arm. Because all of those are rotator cuff type drills to see how strained that really was that last possession. From the 10 yard line, Iowa starts first down. Stanley standing strong in the pocket, and Goodson with the catch. Elijah Griffin comes up with the tackle. You know, this is only the fourth series that Iowa has been on the field offensively and USC has been on the field defensively because of the four possessions in the first half, one of them was a kick return. Now this is the opening possession for Iowa in this second half. Brian Ferentz has done a great job of both attacking the USC defense and yet also having that ball control style that is limiting the number of possessions for his opponent. Second down and five. Play fake. Stanley delivers over the middle and complete. Tyrone Tracy Jr., the receiver, he was open, but that ball thrown high. Anytime your wide receiver is over the middle of the field as a quarterback, you have to do your very best to put the ball on his frame. It's so hard for that player to get reach above his head. All those bad thoughts start coming in your mind about the defenders around you. You got to call what's what frame him up. Throw that ball on his frame. You're on third down. You got to think, Gus, maybe Smith Marset. He's been electric. Smith Marset, there he is at the bottom, third and five. Stanley underneath and caught Sam Laporta. The freshman tight end with an eight yard gain in the first down for the Hawkeyes. Nice route here. He's going to come out and then he's going to get across the formation. What I love is the release and then he gives a little outside move and Hafunga just can't stay with him. Talanoa Hafunga gets beat. Their space created. This is why they're so high on Sam Laporta. It's those little nuances in his route running, even as a young player, that allow him to create space and then thus equal completions for the quarterback. Four catches, 31 yards for Laporta. First down at the 23. Stanley under pressure and incomplete. That one thrown out wide to Sean Bayer. Boy, Talanoa Hafunga absolutely drilled Nate Stanley here. Nate Stanley, big dude, but bam, right in his chest, and he had to get that ball out quickly. That's why it was nowhere near his wide receiver. Hafunga is only... 220 pounds, Stanley about 245. Well, Funga did a great job getting home on that pressure. Second and 10. Goodson on the stretch, trying to get outside. 
nothing but nothing doing a funga made that play happen as John Houston comes up and makes the tackle good angles and pursuit effort from the USC defense here you're gonna see all these defenders from inside no Teote he's coming Houston's coming oh, Funga is coming they do a great job cutting off that outside and creating a long third down opportunity here. Nate Stanley, empty backfield, no running backs back there with him. Can the Trojans get off the field? Third down and 11 at the 22. Empty set for Stanley. Here they come. Stanley standing strong. Another great catch by Sam Laporta. And a first down for Iowa. Third and 11, and the Hawkeyes get 13. Come on. Young players aren't supposed to be able to do this. Stanley has to deliver the ball high because he can't follow through with the rush in his face. And Laporta goes up the ladder. Beautiful catch with his hands and hangs on in front of the defender while being hit in the air. First down. So a first down for Iowa, Stanley, 14 of 17, 156 yards, and a touchdown. Torn Young comes in and running back. They'll give it to him straight ahead, and Young power running as he slices through the Trojan defense. Naote Ote finally brings him down. That is such a demoralizing conversion because this USC defense has not gotten off the field tonight. All three possessions that the Iowa offense has had the ball, they have ended up driving down the field six plays or more and scoring a touchdown. It looks like USC has the upper hand. They're going to force a punt, and boom, Stanley, big completion to Laporta, and they move the chains. Second and two. Smith-Marset in motion. Here's the give to Young, looking for the first down, and he has it. John Houston with the stop. And a first down, Iowa. And this is when they start leaning on you in that offensive line. They get that big conversion. They go right back to the run game. Couple of runs, move the chains. And this defense, which has not been out there for a lot of possessions or necessarily snaps, it's been out there for a lot of time. And you got to wonder how they're doing from a fatigue standpoint on that defensive line with this big Iowa offensive line leaning on them for most of the night. Formation, Ross and Young. Stanley. Timing pattern. Smith Marset caught over the shoulder and out of bounds inside the USC 20. 35 yard gain. They try to go to Chris Steele in coverage one on one, and Marset beats him with what? Speed. All night long, Gus. Nobody for the Trojans have been able to run with Amir smith Marset. His speed has been overwhelming. Another beautiful throw from Nate Stanley. He again is playing his best game, potentially of his career. He is 15 of 18, 190 and one touchdown. He is shredding this USC defense apart. First down from the 19-yard line now for the Hawkeyes. The pitch, Goodson with blockers in front of him. Goodson hits the sideline and finally out of bounds at around the 12. Greg Johnson ushers him out of play. All right, you ready to see what a first rounder looks like? Watch this big boy run. Tristan Wirfs, 6'5, 230 pounds, and he is out there, nimble, running. Doesn't get a devastating block, but it's just his presence. It's that lead back there. And Goodson, as a young player, does a great job being patient, staying behind that massive right tackle that he has and he gains eight yards great play this I mean I tell you what he could be a great player for a lot of years in the National Football League 11th play of the drive second and two at the 11 they go straight ahead look at the pile moving forward wow Stanley on a quarterback sneak gets eight yards and he's now inside the five how about this push let him eat up front they're feeling it. Great push. You see Wirfs in there. 64, Kyler shot. Tyler Linderbaum, number 65. He's a redshirt freshman as a center and one of the tone setters for them physically. Great, tough player. A lot of these guys have wrestling backgrounds. They understand leverage, toughness, and they're nasty. First down and goal of the three. 
another quarterback sneak. Well, now they're just trying to flex, right? Now they're just, <laughs> they're just trying to flex. Big Ten football. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we will ground you and pound you. That's what they do in the Big Ten, week in and week out. And this man, one of the great coaches in America, Kirk Ferentz, 64 years old, 21st season at Iowa. Second and goal at the one. Will they do it again? Yes, they will. Quarterback sneak. And they will not get in. That'll bring up third down. Here's the push. Trying to go right back to it. Great job there by number one, Naote Ote, who comes in. He was the one that stopped the momentum, leaves his feet. He's the one that gets Stanley. And then also Houston, number 10. Now they got to do it again. Uh, like you can't do it twice and then not do it a third time. Now it's just a good old fashioned tractor pull. Brian Ferentz, don't call something different. Don't do it. The world deserves a third quarterback sneak in a row. Let's go. The ruling on the field, the runner was short of the goal line. The previous play is under further review. Uh, the only thing that ruins a nice sense of drama is the official. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct, sir. <laughs> Back after this. They reviewed that last play. They said that it stands as called on the field, that Stanley did not get in. So here we go, third down. They've quarterback sneaked three times in a row from about the eight-yard line to get to this point. Do it again, Brian Ferentz. Do it again. And they don't. They hand it off. Touchdown, Iowa. Tyler Goodson. And Iowa takes a 34-24 lead. Well, he decides to go behind his best player, his most talented player, the Mauler, number 74, Tristan Wirfs on this side. Watch the push that Wirfs gets on the outside. That hole, he's way in the end zone. That allows Goodson the opportunity. Have a little jump step, and he gets in. Did look like he got that ball across before a part of his body hit the turf. Extra point up and good for Duncan. Another long drive for the Hawkeyes. 14 plays covering 90 yards. They score seven. Iowa up 35-24. Nate Stanley leading Iowa on another long NFL-type drive. And how about this, George Kittle? Let's go, Hawkeye football. He's uh, pretty good tight end, I would say. Oh my gosh, he's having a phenomenal year with San Francisco. And the 49ers win, and they are the one seed. Lose, they likely fall, I think, like to five. Laporta, is he the next Kittle, Hawkinson, Fant? I tell you, he's had some great catches tonight. And the six-minute drives have just killed USC. Last drive, seven minutes and 19 seconds. That's three drives tonight, over six minutes. Iowa faithful have probably wondered themselves, like, where was this offense all season long? Well, part of the problem is you faced six top 30 defenses as far as yards per play USC is not anywhere near that and that's one of the reasons why Iowa has had such a good night on the opposite side Slovis dealing with some pain the last series or the first series out of halftime he gets hit in the head he goes back on the turf the next series out he gets that arm bent back he was down right away, wincing in pain. He has not returned. Matt Fink came in. There's Slovis in the tent. And he is now on the sideline as Matt Fink is in the game for USC. First down and 10 of the 25. Carr next to Fink. Here's Fink throwing on first down. And caught out of bounds. Tyler Vaughn's. Vaughn to pick up seven on the play in front of Matt Hankins. That defense for USC has been the clear weakness of this team all season long. They were 66th in scoring defense. They were 83rd in total defense coming into tonight. 76th in turnovers gained, and they haven't even stopped Iowa one time tonight. 
Second down and three. Carr, first down. Hits the sideline. Nice running. Stays on his feet as he goes out of bounds. Hankins again. Knocking him out of play, but it's game 13. And now this defense for Iowa. This is right in their wheelhouse because they don't give up many big plays. We did see the big play to Amon Ross St. Brown earlier, but they just don't give many big plays up. And USC is going to have to meth methodically get the ball down the field. Fink delivers. Tyler Vaughn's again. It's a tough situation as a quarterback, Gus, because you you want to get it back. You know, you, you want to create momentum, create plays, and yet that defense, what they're giving you is just the easy throw, the easy catch, and you have to take it. You got to be patient, and that's incredibly difficult to do, in particular for a guy off the bench in Matt Fink, who is going to want to jumpstart this offense. Second down and five at the 50. Fink. Finding a little rhythm now. Pittman with the catch. Should be a first down as he fights forward. Lost it. Picked up by Iowa, but he may have been down. Second effort by Pittman. And they give it to the Hawkeyes. O.J. Mudio was the corner of the number 11. The ball was fumbled and recovered by Iowa. First Pittman down. lunged in a second effort type of scenario here. Here's the catch. The initial contact. Watch as he spins right here. And now he's going to lunge forward. And that ball did look like it was popping out just before that right knee hit the ground. The knee is above the ground. That ball is out on That's the out. second effort. That looks like it's a turnover, and Iowa's defense comes up with a huge play. So the Hawkeyes take over at the 43. Report of the motion man. They'll hand it off. Goodson. Christian Rector. Senior. Making the tackle. This defense hasn't done anything all night. They've had a couple of chances on third and long to get off the field. They haven't been able to do it. They've not covered well in the secondary. They haven't gotten some sustained pressure on Nate Stanley, but they desperately need a play here. They've got to get themselves off the field and get the ball back for this USC offense now down 11. Second down and seven. Young, the single setback for the Hawkeyes. Play fake, deep drop. Here Stanley sets up, looking in the area of number 28, incomplete. Young had that one knocked out of his, out of his hands by Chris Steele. Steele had to make up some ground here. Stanley probably shouldn't have put this much air on the ball. He needed to drive that ball into his back, who was on a wheel route. He puts some air on it, and that allows Steele to come over the top and get the pass deflection, incomplete pass. And now here's the scenario, Gus. They need it. They desperately need it. Got to get off the field here on third down, create some pressure, and they're going to bring it right up the middle. Iowa looking for seven yards. Stanley. Incomplete. Nico Regani couldn't dig it out of the turf. And the Hawkeyes will punt for the first time tonight. And Regani, normally a sure-handed guy, he's had 44 catches, a couple of touchdowns on the year. Stanley does the right thing. He's got the time. The protection was good. Maybe the ball needs to come up just a bit, but Regani's got to go down there and get that completion and move the chains, and that's a big stop for the Trojans. So Michael Sleep Dalton punting it away under pressure. And this ball fair caught at the 15. I'm on Ross St. Brown, the return man. Bowl season rolls on Monday on Fox. We've got Cal taking on Lovey Smith's resurgent Illinois squad in the Red Box Bowl. Catch all the action starting at 3.30 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Amon Ross St. Brown wears number 92 when he's returning punts. 
And then he'll flip back to his number eight. Slip on jerseys, they're called. It, it looked like a giant 1978 jersey. <laughs> Big floppy jersey. First down at the 15 for Matt Fink. Fink will throw it. And incomplete. Vaughn's the intended receiver. Let's take a look at that jersey. There they go. So he's like, all right, back to offense. Get that jersey off. <laughs> so they ripped rip the 92 off. Oh, man, they need the tear away. They need to put some Velcro up there. College football. <laughs> Slip on jerseys. <laughs> Double numbers. Linemen that wear, defensive linemen that wear number two. A challenge. Second and ten at the 15. Think. Rolls out. Drops it off. Caught. And Carr is leveled by Michael O.J. Mudia. The senior from Farmington Hills, Michigan. His older brother Mario, four-year letterman in Ann Arbor with the University of Michigan. This is exactly what Iowa wants. Go ahead and throw it short. We're up 11. Our offense is in rhythm. Now they unleash the pass rusher. Try to create some pressure. Epinesa has had a heck of a game. He's at the bottom of your screen. Rushing from the defense's right. Third down and nine at the 16. Epinesa got back there. Fink rolling out. He's got to make something happen. And he'll just throw it out of bounds. But what a rush by Epinesa. Chauncey Colston with pressure as well. Forced him up in the pocket because of that outside rush. Here's that rush on the outside against Austin Jackson, number 73. Look at him clump that outside arm down, and that's what allows him to get the edge. When you get the offensive lineman's outside hand off of you, that's when you can create the edge, get around, and get that speed rush. He does a great job of clubbing that outside hand and getting there and forcing Fink to get out of the pocket. Max Cooper punting. Excuse me. Ben Griffith's punting from the one-yard line. Max Cooper is the deep man. Cooper has it and goes down quickly. Tyler Vaughn's with the tackle. Now, don't forget to check out all of Joel's Breaking the Huddle content at foxsports.com slash breaking the huddle and on Fox Sports social platforms sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Big games tomorrow, JK. You ain't lying. Who do you like? Well, I think LSU is playing much better defense. I like them over Oklahoma. And I just think we saw Ohio State seven times. They're so complete. They never throw out a dud. I think Ohio State gets it done. Big win over Clemson. Here's Young. And that most likely will take us to the end of the third quarter. The Iowa Hawkeyes lead the USC Trojans 35 to 24 after three. Coming up, the fourth quarter from San Diego. Holiday Bowl right after this. Welcome back. Start of the fourth quarter, 35-24 Iowa. As you take a look at the scoring by quarters, Gus Johnson, Joel Klatt, Jenny Tapp, Dean Blandino in the studio in Los Angeles. Iowa's done such a good job in this game. Both sides of the ball. They had the big special team score. They've gotten to the quarterback really well. Their defense has presented pressure in first Slovis' face, and now... Then Matt Fink's face, and then the Jet. Amir Smith Marset. They haven't been able to deal with his speed. He's won all over the field, running the ball, catching the ball in the return game. And now this offense will try to grind it out here in the fourth quarter. Second down and five of the 37. Stanley looking and incomplete. That one thrown tad high for Weeding. And that brings up third down and five. Iowa with the big 21 points scored in the second quarter. It's been the big difference in this game. Smith Marset, a rushing, receiving, and a 98 yard kickoff return for touchdown all in the first half. Five of eight on third down. They've been doing it 
generally with their slot players they're inside receivers on little curl routes and hook routes just over the chains. They're down at five. Stanley incomplete. Smith Marset. He had running room in front of him, but that ball thrown low. Stanley under pressure. And Stanley really needs to make this pass. That one is easy. Marset Smith is going to easily, Smith Marset, excuse me, is, is going to easily make that first down. And he just totally shorts him, throws it right into the ground. Smith Marset can't do, go down and get it. That's that inconsistency that creeps in with Stanley. He was so good in the first half. He was great early in the third quarter, but hasn't been as sharp over the last couple of series. St. Brown is the deep man. And he'll let it take a bounce. And it will be down at the 21. So if you weren't with us, Keaton Slovis. Storing the kick, personal foul, face mask, receiving team number 41. Half the distance to the goal penalty added from the end of the kick. First down, timeout. Keaton Slovis out, Matt Fink in. Fourth quarter, SC down 35-24. San Diego, California, 35-24. Iowa leading USC. Trojans with the fir football. First down and 10. At the 11, Matt Fink has come on for Keaton Slovis, who went out early in the second half with a shoulder injury. And he has not returned. Fink on first down. Malapaya cuts it back with some running room. Nice little jitterbug. Vi will gain seven yards. And they've changed up their personnel a little bit here and trying to slow down this rush. So what they've done is they've brought on their tight end, Eric Kromenhoek, number 84. And they're playing now with kind of a three wide receiver and a tight end look so they can put him into the backfield if need be and get some extra protection if they need it for Fink. Malapai again looking for the first down and he runs into a brick wall, which is Christian Welch. The senior and Christian Welch. He's been so good for them. He got hurt in the middle of the year in that Penn State game and he actually missed the game against Wisconsin. They lost by two points. His absence was certainly felt trying to stop Jonathan Taylor. Oh my goodness. The ball is loose. Iowa has it at the USC five. Christian Welch with the recovery. They tried to get in a big set here. Wide receivers in, trying to pinch down and get this first down with Malapai, and the snap goes high. It's one of the things I don't love about this new style of football where you're in the shotgun regardless of situation. Because, Gus, when you're in a short yardage situation, that center is trying to get off the line of scrimmage and get low as quickly as he can. When his head goes down, his butt goes up, and that ball tends to go high. In a short yardage situation, I'd much rather see the quarterback under center and allow that quarterback then to get the ball back to the running back if you want to run it. First down and goal to the six-yard line. Goodson in the backfield. Stanley to throw it. Stanley caught by Laporta. And not much. Greg Johnson right there with the tackle. No gain on the play. Yeah, straight man-to-man -man coverage. Johnson was right there. Makes a good open field tackle as Iowa was trying to get Laporta out on the edge and outflank that defense with the motion. Didn't think Greg Johnson could get it out there, and he did. But now on the left hash, this is when I always feel like a team like this with a guy like Stanley, they're either going to sit there and, and drop back or get him on the move towards the right and try to get somebody into the flat. Second down and goal of the six. Let's see if they run towards 74. Here's Stanley in the end zone. Incomplete. 
Smith Marset had not turned around yet. If he just gets his head around, that's a touchdown. This is actually a beautiful throw and timing from Stanley. It's supposed to be on the back shoulder with the way that he's running that route. He's not trying to dump that over the top towards the pylon. He's trying to throw a back shoulder, little seam fade, and Mar Smith Marset never turned around. Beautiful throw, bad adjustment by the wide receiver, and now it's third down. Smith Marset with three touchdowns in this game a rushing touchdown, a receiving touchdown. And a kickoff return, 98 yards for a touchdown. Can he get four? Third down goal of the six. Oh, what a mistake here. Did they get the timeout, or is this going to be a delay? Before the play clock expired, timeout was called Iowa. Their first timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. So Iowa did get the timeout. Kirk Ferentz, four-time Big Ten Coach of the Year. Only Bo Schimbeckler was better. Bo with six. Coach Ferentz, nine and eight in bowl games. Two Big Ten titles, 02 and 04. And I tell you what, when he walks in the meeting room, he's a former linebacker. He still looks like a linebacker. <laughs> he still goes through major workouts with the strength and conditioning people at Iowa. Yeah, they've been so consistent over the years. And, and Kirk's one of the one of the good ones, you yes, know, in our business. Love getting a chance to talk with him. Got to give Gary Barta, the athletic director, and everybody at Iowa kudos because in this day and age of Hiring and firing, buying coaches out, chasing the latest and greatest. Iowa is sitting there. They've had two head football coaches since 1979. Wow. The late Hayden Fry and Kirk Ferentz. Different story for USC. Yeah, it sure has been. They've been musical chairs there a couple of years ago. Now they're going to stay with Clay Helton. Wouldn't be surprised if we see some staff shake up here in the coming weeks after the season as Clay understands that he probably needs to Take a good hard look at his program and try to get better moving forward. Third down and goal of the six. Goodson standing right next to Stanley. Here's Stanley. Under pressure, steps up. Big fella wants to run it. Throws. Caught for a touchdown, but there is a flag. Brandon Smith with the touchdown, but with Stanley beyond the line of scrimmage boy it's awfully close the flag is in the end zone holding I thought, yeah as defense, a hold. number eight penalties decline touchdown there's no flag on the field for being across the line of scrimmage his whole body would have had to have been across that line of scrimmage Here's Stanley, watch him step up in the pocket, and now he gets over to his left, and there he's running right down that original line of scrimmage. He throws it to Brandon Smith. You see the flag in the backfield. Here's the blue line, unofficial line of scrimmage. Stanley is running right down that line of scrimmage. Certainly part of his body is behind it. Yeah, there's no doubt he's behind the line of scrimmage. And he's able to get that ball to Brandon Smith. What a throw here. Watch as he torques his body back. And he's able to get it to Smith. And he catches it for a touchdown. And after all those long drives, Iowa goes three plays covering six yards and scoring in 54 seconds. After they recovered the fumble. 41-24 Hawkeyes. What a performance for this Iowa team here. Looking for their 10th win. That's Jay Tufele, who was shaking up the great defensive tackle, first team all pack 12 for USC. But Kirk Ferentz has got to be absolutely elated with the way his team is playing. And now in his mind, there is one word going through his mind finish. finish. He wants his guys to finish this one off in the last 12.52. Stanley talking to his center, Tyler Linderbaum. This offensive line has given Stanley some nice protection this evening. 42 to 24. 
Iowa leading USC here in the fourth. Back after this. Young Phil McCockey at Navy. Over him with the New York Giants had just a spectacular NFL career. He'll be a defensive and offensive MB MVP here and certainly three quality candidates there Amir Smith Marset, Nate Stanley, AJ Epinesa. Hawkeye send it away into the end zone for touchback. Amir Smith Marset tonight. First Big Ten player with rush TD, kickoff return TD, receiving TD since 2008. That was Derek Williams of Penn State. First player in school history with two kickoff return touchdowns in a single season. He's done it in back-to-back -back games. How Did about against Nebraska in their last game and then tonight? Well, how about the 2018 Outback Bowl against Mississippi State? He set the bowl game record with 150 kickoff return yards. And he tied a career high with four catches, one of them a touchdown. And they throw it on first down. And it's Kristen, first time we've called his name tonight. And he got a lot of playing time with all the injuries in the backfield for USC. He was the only healthy back when they played Oregon. And Oregon rolled into the Coliseum earlier this year and really handed it to USC. USC was really outclassed in that game, in particular in the second half. And Similar field tonight. All start offense number 21. Five yard penalty. First down. Tyler Vaughn's there, number 21. A little bit of an early start. You know, we've seen this USC team and, and they start out so fast and it's tough to cover them. But then the problem is. Obviously, Slovis tonight gets banged up. He had his bell rung a little bit. Then he got that shoulder bent back. Part of the problem, I think, is, is they've got to commit more to the run game. There just has not been enough run game, and so the pass rush for their opponents can just start teeing off on their quarterback. Pittman with the catch out of bounds and that's the question for coach Harold the new offensive coordinator this year and signs a new deal moving forward as the OC he's a Mike Leach disciple and you know Mike Leach he would rather throw it than run it can he go against maybe what is perceived as his nature yeah he's, he's gonna have to and I know it's difficult right because Gus, they've got a great quarterback. They've got great wide receivers. That's how they move the football. Here's the catch, Vaughn. The problem is that's not how you win championships. You've got to do things like melt the clock away, protect your quarterback, protect your defense. All of that is part of the game. It's not just about offensive numbers. I'm not saying Graham's just about offensive numbers, and he's still a young guy. And I think when talking about him, he understands that protecting Keaton Slovis in the future with the run game is going to be very important. He believes in the run game much more than Mike Leach does. Mike Leach does not call run plays. That is not what the future is going to be for USC, but when you get into these games in these big environments against good defenses, you've got to keep the pass rush honest. Third down and four. Somebody has got to be looking at the play, play clock. Game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Gus, if a backup quarterback is in the game, it is one coach on the sidelines' sole job to look at the play clock because you realize that. The backup quarterback has so much going through his head. It's tough for him to think of everything, in particular the play clock. Somebody's got to be but watching he can that. See it right I, there. Listen, I get it, but sometimes he's looking at AJ Epinesa instead of that, you know, big red <laughs> clock. That's true. Someone's got to call time out there. Third down and nine. I think incomplete. Bonds, the intended receiver. SC with Slovis going out is totally lost. Yeah. Their mojo. Yeah. Completely. Fink has nothing like he had against Utah. They got some of those big completions down the field. And when that bright star, Keaton Slovis, left the game, 
the air completely left the sails of the USC Trojans. They had a lot of momentum. They had the onside kick. They scored early in the third quarter. And ever since then, it's just been Iowa body blows. Cooper deep. Has it at the 25. 10 19 to go. Iowa with the football right after this. Bowl games are about more than just the game for most teams. They are also about experiencing this new city. On Tuesday of this week, both teams enjoyed a visit to the USS Theodore Roosevelt. And on Wednesday, Iowa went to the world-renowned San Diego Zoo, and USC dropped by SeaWorld for some fun and some rides. That was Mike Pittman in there. Bayless Jones was to his right. <laughs> 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 he was not having it, was he? <laughs> First down and 10 of the 26 for the Hawkeyes. Up 42 to 24. Young. And Young. By John Houston. Let's go downstairs to Jenny. Well, Gus, I know we speculated this would be the end for Keaton Slovis, but now an official word from USA. He is done because of a shoulder and elbow sprain. And obviously, just watching him on the sideline, his teammates coming up to him, Pittman spending some time with him, Helton as well. And he has tried to remain as involved in this game as possible, but he's been very careful to make sure that right side stays loose. He's been holding it, supporting it with his left side. Jacket on, and you mentioned it. It really did take so much out of the sideline with his loss. Absolutely. Second down and nine at the 27. For Iowa. Hawkeyes in no rush at this point. Here's Stanley looking. Flag on the play and Stanley will slide down at the line of scrimmage. Christian Rector. Hot pursuit. There is no foul on the play. Second down. I think the flag came out because Rector and Tyrone Tracy kind of got tangled up, and they might have been thinking about a little defensive hold there. But uh, that's a, a really quality pickup by Bob Welch, or excuse me, uh, the head official tonight. And he was able to pick that up. I don't think that that should have been a defensive hold. And brings up third down. Third down 10 at the 26. Smith Marset, the motion man. Here's Stanley to throw it under pressure, and Stanley will be. He gets roughed up. Nice job by Greg Johnson on the blitz. They finally get home. Clancy Pendergast was wanting to bring some pressure. Watch here. You're going to finally see number nine, and he just comes into your screen. Again, a couple of guys blocking one guy up front. You had the left guard, Mark Kallenberger, as well as Tyler Goodson, kind of in there blocking one player, and that allows Greg Johnson to get in there and flex on Nate Stanley. Michael Sleep Dalton punting for the third time. He'll punt this time out of his own end zone. 8.25 and counting. Amar Ron St. Brown is the deep man. And this one downed around the 40-yard line with 8.11 to go. SC down with the ball right after this. 24, Matt Fink come in here in the second half for Keaton Slovis. He has it first down and 10 at the 43. Fink to throw it. And a wind up for the deep ball with an open receiver. Incomplete. That one thrown late. Pittman was open. Boy, trying to have a little half roll to the right and then throw it deep back to the left. That's just dangerous. And Pittman has been largely uh, taken out of this game. Only four catches for 21 yards. Remember, this is a team that against UCLA had four of these receivers go over 100 yards. Tonight, only St. Brown 
as he puts that century mark. Second down and ten. And they'll run it out of Payai. Trying to pick his way forward. It'll be tackled for a loss. Chauncey Golston. Golston has had a really solid game yep. this evening for Iowa. Yep. Opposite A.J. Epinesa, he sure has. And good young player and from Detroit. He'll be one of the building blocks in the future. But boy, this is a tumultuous end to a really tumultuous few weeks for the USC program. Third down and 12 of the 45. And Fink. Caught. First down. Pittman. Great catch. Great route. We'll go down inside the Iowa 25 yard line. A gain of 21. Well, they waited a long time to make the announcement to keep Clay Helton and retain him for the future. This is a team that's going to be really good next year. Uh, you got to expect that there's going to be some staff shakeups. They did hire a new athletic director, Mike Bone, from Cincinnati during the middle of the football season. I'm in Ross A. Brown. Trying to get out of bounds. And he does. I think most people, let's be honest, were surprised when they decided to stick with Clay and move forward. Um, there's a lot going on in this university, and I think a lot of the... A lot of the indecision above Clay Helton and, and the issues that they're dealing with outside the athletic department have created a lot of instability, like Matt said in the pregame, uh, around this program. And it's been been tough. It's been a tough road for USC fans. Then obviously the recruiting on the early signing day did not go well. They were the 78th ranked class. Now, to be fair, when you only sign 11 players because there's only 11 spots, you're not going to have a high ranking. Those are cumulative rankings, not average. If you do average it out, it's not a ton better, but it is 38th in the country. If you average out their 11 recruits, nine of them on the line of scrimmage, three defensive lines, six offensive line. Underneath incomplete, Vaughn's the intended receiver. You know, I've been doing USC games now, Pac-12 games. For this is my ninth year, and uh, you've been waiting, we've been waiting, we've been through Lane Kiffin and Sarkeesian. Ogeron in there for a second. Ogeron. So much, as you mentioned, instability. Yeah. Decision-making, decision-makers. You just love USC, their tradition, but sometimes it feels like it takes 10,000 people to screw in one light bulb. Third down and 11. It's a great way to put it. At the 13. Fink in trouble. And he's stopped. Latimer and Goldstein. That pass rush has been dominant, really, from the second quarter on. Those defensive linemen have absolutely gotten after it. Did a heck of a job. Golson. He gets there, Epinesa gets there, and they have a little party at the quarterback. Matt Fink had no chance, and USC will have to settle for a field goal. Again, a product of not being able to run the football at all. That pass rush has teed off constantly, and I understand that the margin right now on the scoreboard plays into that. And the field goal, no good. McGrath hooking it, 5-12 to go. Iowa will take over. High fives going all around for Iowa fans. Kirk Ferentz to win his 10th bowl game. Man, he's been to 17 bowl games. He's got a heck of a team here. What a year Iowa has had. They'll win their 10th game tonight, Gus. They'll be 10 and 3. Their three losses, all the ranked opponents. Michigan, Penn State, Wisconsin by a combined 14 points. Total 14 points. Wow. Hayden Fry loved the Holiday Bowl. He absolutely did. And he loved this program. And he put the foundation in place for what has been one of the top 10, 15 programs in the country over the last 10 or 15 years. What a great job. 
Kirk Ferentz has done, and he's continued the legacy of what was built under Hayden Fry. The late Hayden Fry in 1983 had one of the best staffs in history. Barry Alvarez was on that staff. Dan McCartney, Kirk Ferentz, Bill Snyder, and Bob Stoops were all on that staff. Those five individuals on one college football staff have the most career wins at five different universities. That is an astounding fact and foundation and legacy of the late and great Hayden Fry. Second down and six at the 25. Goodson. Goodson, the ball As you look to the future for this Iowa team, obviously they'll have to replace their quarterback, Nate Stanley, and then they're going to sit and they're going to wait because a lot of guys have to make decisions. Tristan Wirfs, the great right tackle, will have to make a decision. A.J. Epinesa, the defensive end, has to make a decision. Geno Stone, we haven't called his name a lot tonight, the safety number nine, uh, is going to make a decision. I think Wirfs is probably talented enough to go, but if he comes back, I think you're talking about Tristan Wirfs as a potential top two, three pick in the entire draft if he were to stay in school another year. Oh, look at this throw. And a first down for the Hawkeyes. And that's Nate Whedon. 17-yard gain. I love the plan that Brian Ferentz has had tonight. I give him a lot of credit. He's used the aggressiveness and athleticism of the USC defense against themselves. He's used misdirection, jet sweeps. We've seen those little throwbacks, one a tight end screen there, a little bit of a throwback on a bootleg. And he's used the speed of Amir Smith-Marset and the matchups that he could create. His quarterback played well. They've played physical at times. Gus just pounding away at that USC defense with a big physical offensive line. And they have got to be proud of the way this offense has played. Good see. Nobody appreciates this style of win more than the Iowa fan base, right? Yes, no doubt about it. Tough, hard nose, long drives, running the football, some good game planning, flashing Amir Smith Marset. Boy, they are unapologetic about their style, the way that they go about it, the way that they develop their players and the strength and conditioning program. Second down and 11 at the 44. Goodson. But Amir Smith Marset, what a game for this young man. How about that? Showed off his speed. This was the touchdown run on a little jet sweep. Then the kickoff return showing the speed off. This was a great run after the catch on a little wide receiver screen as he gets into the end zone. Here, I thought he was going for the quad. The, the touchdown pass, and it was just out of the reach of Brandon Smith. When Smith Marset goes in the locker room, he better go up to Brandon Smith and say, "Hey, leave, caught your, that. leave your feet, man. You're right, you're leave right. your feet." Player down right now, though, for SC, and that's Taylor Stewart, the freshman from San Diego, right here. Helix, Isaac. And we'll step away momentarily. 2.05 to go. Back right after this. Welcome back. 2.05 remaining in this football game. Iowa with a big lead second half. SC came out. Looked as if they were really ready to take a step forward but uh, Slovis got hurt and everything changed immediately. Uh, pass rush started getting after him. AJ Epinesa had a, a great night and really you know it wasn't just the Iowa defense. The offense was spectacular really led by Nate Stanley and Amir Smith Marset and Nate Stanley did do a little damage on the record book for Iowa tonight. He moved into second place all time most career passing yards in Iowa history. 
Now only looking up at the great Chuck Long. Nate Stanley has thrown for 8,302 yards as an Iowa Hawkeye. Isaac Taylor Stewart walking off on his own. It's a good sign to see the young man able to put some pressure on those legs and get off the field. Brian Ferentz, the son of Kirk Ferentz, offensive coordinator, former offensive line coach. And it looks like he is a head coach in waiting somewhere somewhere on the road and with the current trend in college football at Oklahoma and Ohio State and now at Washington maybe Gus is at Iowa Kirk Ferentz 64 years old 21 seasons at Iowa third down five Stanley to throw it. Looking for the first down to end the game. Incomplete Smith Marset, but a flag on the play. Personal foul, illegal block below the waist offense, number 36. Penalty is declined. The result of the play is accepted. Fourth down. Well, they're going to get Brady Ross, 36. He's going to block Talanoa Hafunga, and he's just going to come out in protection, and he blocks him low. I, I guess they're saying this is from the side, but Hafunga is the one. Hofunga is the one that turned away from him. That's that's a poor call. Um, I don't know if they're going to get graded down or not from their evaluator, but that defender, he clearly approaches him from the front. He can block him low from the front, and if the defender turns, that's on the defender. Wow, what a punt by Michael Sleep Dalton. With 152 to go, SC will come on to the field. 39-yard punt, but placed perfectly by Sleep Dalton. Great performance from this Iowa team all around. Special teams, kick return for a touchdown. The kicking game has been really good. The only guy we haven't really seen is the one that was the All-American. All Keith Duncan, he's made 29 field goals this year. And in large part because they were not a great red zone offense. They couldn't punch it in and he would have to settle for a field goal. But tonight they've been 100 percent scoring touchdowns in the red zone. So we haven't seen Keith Duncan and he didn't get a chance to kick his three field goals and set the all time FBS record for field goals in a season interception. And it's intercepted Neiman touchdown Hawkeyes. Exclamation point. Twenty five yards and the Hawkeyes go up forty eight to twenty four. That's a special play for Nick Neiman. His father is on the coaching staff. Jay Neiman is the assistant defensive line coach here for Iowa and he watches his son Nick in the Holiday Bowl read the eyes perfectly get the pick and gets all the way into the end zone pick six for Nick Neiman the junior from Sycamore Illinois. Total domination and USC fans have got to be absolutely sick with where their program is at currently. What a performance for these Hawkeyes. They're just confirming upstairs that he was able to get into the end zone. And they do that 
and Iowa looks to tack on their 49th point here in San Diego. What a night for the Hawkeyes. Wow. A pick six, a kick return for touchdown, two passing touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns. Complete domination for Iowa. 143 to go, 49 24. A minute 43 remaining in the fourth. This Iowa team so disciplined, so prepared coming into this game. They got some spectacular performances from a number of different players. 49 to 24 our score. Gus, I like I just I'm staring out of the field and I'm, I'm watching the fan base for Iowa celebrate right now with their team. I'm watching Kirk Ferentz and the smiles and you look over and you've got one program that let's be honest is the absolute picture of stability and consistency in college football and then one on the other side that quite frankly is searching for an identity and to say that about the University of Southern California is striking it's hard feel for him, I'll tell you that. I see just such a great program, so many great players, so many great people. They got to get it back. That's I mean that's well they've been trying to get it back for a long time since Pete Carroll left. Let's let's be honest, it starts at the top. Carol Fult has got to commit to being great in athletics. She's got to give the resources to new, the new athletic director Mike Bone who has to give the resources to now Clay Helton who needs to go out and he's going to have to make hard decisions about his staff in particular on that defensive side. And this is a talented team coming back. When you look at what they bring back, in particular on the offensive side, I think it's easy to say that they're one of the top two or three contenders for the Pac-12 championship next year. And, you know, this is, they got to they gotta figure this out quickly. This is the University of Southern California. Kristen slammed to the ground. And this program, to be quite blunt, has been using a lot of excuses for a lot of years and those need to go by the wayside they need to commit from the top down and they need to move forward and they need to move towards excellence in this program because that's what their fan base deserves now the payout and he's dropped for a loss on the other side, a great year for Iowa. Their only losses, Michigan, Penn State, Wisconsin, Kirk Ferentz. Tremendous leader. Tremendous attitude of his players and commitment. They come out to San Diego, win a football game. To cap off the season the right way. Pay I. Looks like that's the final play of the game. Iowa will improve to 10 and 3. SC drops to 8 and 5. Kirk Ferentz and the Hawkeyes win at 49 big points to 24. What a performance. Kirk Ferentz, his staff did a great job getting their team ready for this bowl game. Had a good week here in San Diego. They came out here and totally dominated. All three sides, Gus. What a great performance by a very consistent program. 49-24, the final. The Iowa Hawkeyes win the Holiday Bowl. Amir Smith-Marset with three touchdowns, rushing, receiving, and a kickoff return, 98 yards for a score. Laporta, the freshman tight end, with some tremendous catches. Nate Stanley was solid. Their quarterback, A.J. Epinesa, got a sack, strip. It was just all over the field this evening. Let's go downstairs to Jetty Tack. Nate, I know that it was important for this team to get to the double digits in the win column, and for you, a third bowl victory. What does it mean to this group to finish the season in this fashion? Uh, it's extremely special. Uh, you know, we put in so much time and effort together that, uh, you know, when our when our goal of a Big Ten championship was off the line, we set a new goal and we set our sights on it and went at it full force. 
know for you, it's the last time we're going to see you in this Iowa jersey. Yeah. You're finishing your career second most passing yards, second most wins as a QB of the Iowa Hawkeyes. What has this experience been like for you as you reflect on your time? Yeah, the last four years have been the best four years of my life. Uh, I can't say enough about my teammates, my coaches, you know, our fans. They're great. Uh, you know, it's just been extremely special to be able to play for this team and to get a play for Coach Ferentz. I also have to ask you, just because the Iowa community has been dealing with some loss in the last mm -hmm. month, playing for Bump Elliott, for Coach Fry, for the Bethard family, how much more did the win mean because of that? Yeah, I mean, I think we all, all know that those, all three of those people uh, in, the, in the Bethard family have a huge impact on Iowa football. Um, you know, we just want to go out and, and compete and, and, you know, show respect to them and, and the way that they went about things and just give it our best and, and, and you know, give all the glory to, to them and, and uh, you know, play for them. It's been a pleasure watching you these last couple of years. We wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eight. All right, the final score here at the Holiday Bowl, Iowa 49, USC 24. Coming up after this short break, we'll have the trophy presentation. Thank you, Rob, and let's hand out some hardware to the 2019 Holiday Bowl champion, Iowa Hawkeyes. To help me tonight, the president of the Holiday Bowl this year, Mr. Paul Herring. All right, it's my pleasure to announce the defensive MVP of tonight's game. He's a defensive end, number 94, A.J. Epineza. His teammates are chanting one more year. AJ, what a great performance you guys had defensively. In particular, in the second quarter, you guys ratcheted up the pressure on Keaton Slovis and their passing game. What was said on the sideline to make that adjustment? Um, we, we know that's what they like to do, and um, we just want to exploit that and play hard and pin your ears back and get off the quarterback, and that's what we did. Your defense played so well all night long, but you've been a leader here for a couple of years, such a productive player as a defensive end. What is it about your game that you think translates to rushing the passer? Uh, um, just build momentum off my teammates. I mean, I got great guys behind me. Look at all these guys. I got these great boys behind me. They push me to be better, and I love these guys. I know you're going to have a big decision to make in the next couple of weeks, so good luck with that, and we'll see you in the future, bud. Thank you. All right, Paul, offensive MVP time. All right, our offensive MVP tonight, incredible performance. He's a wide receiver, number six, Emir Smith Marset. You had the return touchdown, the rushing touchdown, a catch for a touchdown, and you almost threw a touchdown pass in the corner as well. Was it the throw or the catch? It was the throw. <laughs> uh, you know, Nate Stanley is the one that likes to hear you say that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huge game for you, and it was really your speed. You know, I know the last time you were here in California, you were winning track championships uh, back in the day. Uh, you showcased your speed against a very athletic defense. How happy does that make you to come out here and do that against a Pac-12 opponent? Uh, you know, it's huge uh, being able to come out here and show my talents, you know, give credit to the rest of the guys behind me, you know, like, like AJ said. You know, they always support me. Uh, they always push me, always make jokes about how slow I am. So just being able to showcase at, at this level is huge. Your offense, you guys, all year long, you had to face all those great defenses. Five top 30 defenses as far as yards per play. And then you come out here and you hang 49 on USC. How does that make you feel from on offense? 
Man, it's huge. You, we can hang with anybody on any day. Yeah. Amir, congratulations, bud. All right. And now I have the pleasure of presenting the Holiday Bowl, SDCCU Holiday Bowl Championship Trophy to a great guy, head coach of the Iowa Hawkeyes, Kirk Ferentz. Where you want to go, Joel? Right here. Hey, what a season. What a season. You want to put that down or you want to hold, hold it? it? Yeah, okay. Let's hold it. I love it. Ten wins. You know how hard it is to get to that. What do you say about this group? Get to that mark for you. Well, first of all, it's a really special accomplishment, and uh, these guys did the work. They're tremendous uh, football players. They're a tremendous team, and they're better people, and that's what we're proud of. This group of seniors, including your quarterback, three bowl wins for Nate Stanley. This group of seniors, you're always senior-led. You talk about that all the, all the time, the development of all these guys throughout their four and five years. What can you say about this senior class and what they've accomplished? You know, I can't say enough about the seniors. 19 great guys. They started working five years ago, four years ago. But what they've done since January, uh, they've just set, set the bar for everybody. And uh, if I'm correct, I think that's the highest win total in five years history and that starts with those guys just a great group of guys speaking of that history coach I know it was an emotional few weeks for the Iowa football family the passing a bump passing a coach fry you guys removed the Tiger Hawks from the helmet what an amazing performance in tribute to those two great men and foundational pieces for this program. I, I think they both uh, they both approve of this one. And uh, this is uh, Coach Fries, the guy who built this program, got it back up on his feet. There's so many of us that owe him so much. And uh, I just hope his family enjoyed this one tonight. I know they did. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank Paul, all of the Redcoats, Mark Neville. You guys throw a fabulous bowl game here in San Diego. Congratulations to USC on a tremendous season. And for the last time, congratulations to the SDCCU 2019 Holiday Bowl champions, the Iowa Hawkeyes. Let's get back to Los Angeles. Rob Stone.